And if we talk, now 500,000 they go summer house, call them hate speech. But fear not, my ego don't come. In go touch light every corner, nooks and cranny of all these bad, bad people where they spoil our country. <laughs> so my people make me love Okay, some people be they hala say they want the power. Chai. Them be promise us say we go get light and power. Nah, nah. Them hustle so they so they they can't get the power. Hmm. But now they know they do anything with the power. Sheer. Every day dollar just they get the higher power. Over naira, see them talk say make we off mind. But then God say my ego don't come. So my people make you loud. Oh, yeah, yeah. No one may person talk. Hmm. Them say that my egun, that man do they talk. He do they talk. Say my egun diary, he they hot like pepe. But every day, then they tip money in buck. Woman picking, they the street, they hawk. Still, them talk, say, make we no talk. But thank God, say, my egun don't come. So my people make you love. Oh, yeah, yeah. My egun don't come. Oh, yeah, yeah. My people make you shout. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hello there. Aye gun awa mo, amo do 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 do. Aye gun awa mo, amo do 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 do. Good morning to you, good afternoon to you, and good evening to you from wherever you are watching from. It is Mayegun Live. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for joining me. Please take your time to read uh, the caption of the broadcast or read beyond the caption of the broadcast. Read the description of the broadcast. Hear it. Invite your friends, invite your not so friendly friends, your frenemies. Tell them that my ego today. Lectors cut all of now. Tell them. I need a I am to be Eh? Uh, Eme Fioli and Eme Fioli's uh, crime, they will be child's play to what uh, Kadibi Abi Kadobi Kadozo will do to you. you propaganda lange, eh? propaganda vibes, and inshallah, Tifnubu no mix. <laughs> Mm 
Hang on, did somebody say no volume? You better copy it to it now if the volume is not working. Or you might check your own audio. Thank you so much. I guess like Thank you very much for joining me uh, once again. Uh, good morning to you, good afternoon to you, and good evening to you from wherever you are watching from. It is Mayegun live. Uh, we miss uh, our midday broadcaster today simply because I don't know if you notice, eh? I think I've got a swell, you know, a swollen uh, cheek here, right? So I was having some uh, toothache earlier today, but it wasn't like my teeth. Something that's like, uh, you know, my gum. And, you know, I had to use some painkillers and some of them makes me feel drowsy that I had to sleep. I think I still have the, the remnants in my system. So uh, that was why we are not on earlier today. But I've come with uh, a better loaded uh, package tonight. And if you have shared the broadcast already, thank you. I don't know if you probably saw the news earlier today. It started from last night. And majority of you probably didn't see it as propaganda. I mean, true to it, I actually wanted it to be true. Because even me, I wanted to see, I want to see uh you know nigerians kind of have a win like you have a break you know what i mean with this whole thing happening eh? the whole storm that you have to deal with every day especially the economy so even me somehow wanted the news to be real so that you can have something that you can say okay yeah at least that's that's a break and what am I talking about? Last night, Kadobi Kadoso and their propaganda machine, they went to work. And it was to alert Nigerians that, listen, the problem of uh, backlogs, you know, backlog of unpaid, <clears throat> you know, uh, money of uh, investors in Nigeria especially the international hairline operators in Nigeria. So let me give you the backstory. Under Bokwari, uh, these international hairlines, they signed a deal. And in that deal was, they will come and trade in Nigeria. Okay? And whenever it is time for them to recoup their profits, back to their headquarters, which is their own country, the money will be converted to dollars. And the Central Bank of Nigeria was a partner in guaranteeing that investment. You know when they say investors should come to your country? Investor, investors should come to your country. There are some agreements. It's not just coming in to do the business. There are some certain things. Everyone who comes to do business in your country, they are coming from somewhere. They started from somewhere. The profits or whatever they make, and their intention in your country is not to help your country, it's for them eh, to make profits. And in the process, they may be helping their services and other may be helping you, but whatever they give to you is for profit, it's not charity. So at the end of the day, they will need to take this profit or their investment back to their country. So the agreement is yes, once your money is matured, you want to take them away. So under Bokuari, these uh, headlines and some other like international uh, businesses in Nigeria, they started having problems, problems of Forex. 
normally eh, <clears throat> when they trade in Nigeria, they trade in Naira. When you buy your tickets or airline tickets in Nigeria, it is in Naira. Abi, now if uh, you have, uh, for example, let's say an airline have uh, 500 billion Naira accumulated because the Central Bank of Nigeria of Mayfield continue to tell them, you know, who we'll get that cover, who we'll get that cover. At some point, they were giving them fraction of uh, the money they needed to take back to their country, affecting their operations. But that was then. At a point, it finally stopped. They couldn't take their money back to their country. How can you do a business in a country and you can't take the money back to your headquarters because that is a branch of your business and that eh, can actually affect other you know any 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 problem with a branch can affect the other operations or you just have to shut down so this now accumulated to what was then 10 billion dollars and in retaliation these uh, companies, these airlines run back to their countries. And the one that is more prominent among those who actually retaliated, the Nigerian criminal politicians, Nigerian government under APC, they have Naira, there is Naira. That was the money people paid, but the central bank had to make it, turn it into Forex for them to take away. And that was the problem. So Dubai resp responded, UAE, you know that. They had to ban visas to punish Nigerians because of this money. So when uh, Tifnumbu rigged himself in, so they took their propaganda machine to UAE. And within minutes, they announced to the world that UAE had lifted uh, the ban on visa. Because Steve Numbu promised that he will clear the backlog. He will pay all the money. But do you want to know where the, these scammers, these criminals, who seems not to give a damn about the consequences of what they are doing? As long as uh, their propaganda machine eh, can run with all this falsehood, half truth. And then, uh, you know, do some of uh, some other abracadabra that will make it look like, oh, the policy seems working. Oh, Tifnubu has cleared the backlog. No, they didn't clear any backlog. Do you understand what the problem is, right? I'll tell you. When uh, this Wahala started, Naira to dollar exchange rate was 400 uh, Naira to a dollar. Remember that APC, Egbekegbe met dollar to Naira or Naira to dollar at 145 Naira official rate to a dollar and 199 Naira to a dollar black market rate in 2015. I hope you remember that. And immediately they came in every money they found everywhere. They looted them, right? So... The airlines who had, for example, 1 million Naira, when APC came in, an exchange rate was uh, 145 Naira. You see that 1 million Naira could automatically be like around 1,500 uh, or so dollars, Abi, 1 million Naira. Somehow. Abi, so, but when APC came in, let's go forward. Where, when uh, they now make a deal with uh, the Central Bank of Nigeria that their $10 billion will be made available to them at the exchange rate of 400 Naira to a dollar. So 400 Naira to a dollar, so 1 billion Naira, I mean, sorry, uh, one billion dollars, then we mean four hundred billion naira. So with four hundred uh, billion naira, they will get one billion dollars. Uh, 
So look at that deal that way, right? But when this uh, and Ms. Kadobi came in, they now offer that, listen, number one, we don't even know the, we don't even know if all this money is true. So we are trying to probe and see which of the money is true, which one is not true. So how to know which money, which of these businesses, so businesses with their bank statement, everything, or showing the money. Or. So they said they want to investigate. And the template of checking which of this claim is true and which of them is not true is this. Cardo be offered to pay uh, those who are ready at the exchange rate of 1,600 Naira. Now, you know what that simply means? Mm? That means uh, to get, uh, you know, before with 400, wait, sorry, with 400 billion Naira from their 10 billion dollars, with 400 billion, uh, they will get uh, 1 billion dollars, Abi. The overall 10 billion dollars you could possibly put it at 4 trillion naira. So let's say all these international businesses and their money in Nigerian bank that they couldn't take out is a total of uh, 4 trillion, which will give them $10 billion. Okay? So now when you now decide to pay them at the exchange rate of 1,600 naira to a dollar, what you are doing then is that, let me see how I can explain this uh, in my way, right? What you are doing then is that, you see $10 billion, that was $4 trillion. So what you are now saying is, we will give you $4 trillion, uh, Naira. But today, eh, $1 billion, just one, is uh, $1.6 uh, trillion naira that is 1 billion dollars 1. 1.6 uh, trillion so which means the 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 uh, airlines right they would have to convert 1.6 trillion of their money to get 1 billion dollars now if you multiply 1.6 uh, trillion 1.6 trillion 1. 1.6 uh, uh, trillion i think that should be 3.2 4.8 trillion, okay? So, which means Nigeria eh, is going to give them, instead of $10 billion, Nigeria will give them somewhere, something around $3 billion. Nigeria will cancel $7 billion. Because if Nigeria should pay the $10 billion, go, 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 at the $1.6 billion, I'm sorry, one point, I mean, 1,600 Naira to a dollar, Nigeria will be paying about 11.6 trillion naira. Do you get that now? Oh, no, not Nigeria. For these uh, airlines to get $10 billion, they would have to give Nigeria 11.6 trillion naira. But remember, their money was 4 trillion. If you convert it to the old rates that they agreed that they will be paid, eh? That four trillion naira, Nigeria would have to pay them ten billion dollars. But that four trillion naira, that Nigeria, you know, Nigeria is the one printing naira. Be. So that four trillion naira, Nigeria is ready to now pay equivalent of the four trillion naira. If they pay the equivalent of the four trillion naira, eh, that means these people will collect something about two point six billion dollars. So they rejected it. Do you understand? So those who agreed that just give us whatever you have. So we are not even doing business in your country anymore. Just give us anything you have. Those ones in Tifnumbu Kadobi's book, those are the legitimate claim. You see those ones that won't settle for that. Eh? Those are illegitimate claim. And do you know something? Ask them how much of that four trillion naira uh, backlog are they paying 
And how much is it in dollars? Ask them. It is the same thing like, see, what this business is, what they are rejecting is what some of you know even have choice. Remember that in 2015, your 1 million naira in 2015, I think will give you, how much again? Is that not $5,000? Yeah, $5,000. So for you to get 1 million naira, you needed $5,000. Now, if you have put that your 1 million naira in your bank, eh? Or you buy a share in Nigeria. I don't know how to put that to you, right? But let's assume that you just leave the one million naira in the bank. You're not touching it and they have not deducted everything. And you go back there uh, in 2024, nine years after, to check your one million and see how much you have made. So we draw that one million naira and check today. That your one million naira is now worth $700, be $600. From five thousand dollars for one million naira to ordinary seven hundred dollars nine years after, that is what Nigeria, if nobunomics, the RNG arrangement that Kadobi announced to all of you last night, that their media spread all over Nigeria today, they were saying that listen, oh, even though these people have four trillion naira in our bank. Back then, it is worth $10 billion. But today, they still have that $4 trillion. But we are ready now to, to exchange the money for them. But that $4 trillion era is now worth just $2.6 billion. If you are a business or a business rep, would you take such deal from any country? The deal that will make you forfeit 70% of your money. It is your money. Oh. You've paid tax to them. Oh. They've deducted their taxes. They've deducted everything from you. You've paid what you have to pay. It's just the money in their bank. And the agreement that covers you is that every time you want your money, they will exchange it to dollars for you. It's an agreement. You cannot pack Naira to your country. So would you forfeit over $7 billion and say, yes, we agree to a deal with, uh, that is the Tifnubo number. That is what they announced to you. And that is why I say these people are heartless. Because you see, clearing the backlog, eh, clearing the backlog alone, we actually free so many innocent families, Nigerians who are residing, especially in UAE. That was the condition they gave to Tifnumbu when he went there last year. We will do business in your country, but we don't trust your system. We don't trust that way. And if you check Tifnumbu's video in most of the places he's been to, he kept saying, do your money in, your money out. You will not have problem taking your money out. Don't worry, you won't, you won't have any problem. When you invest in Nigeria, you can take your money out anytime. Why? Because that's what the UAE told him. We can't do a business in a place where, you know, our money will get stuck and we can't really get any, uh, what do you call it, any help from your court. It's like you have no real law. Eh? Everybody wants to take bribe. I'm talking about your money. So, you know, we can't, we can't work in such place. So if you really want, that's what our, our people said, you know, their businesses will be affected. Their businesses are being affected as we speak right now. Like you have $10 billion somewhere. So people get one billion, some two billion, some hundred, uh, some hundreds of millions of dollars. They are money. And when they left, they also left with thousands of jobs. Ask, I mean, ask some of the people you know that were working with some of these international businesses back then. They had to, some of them had to sell whatever they can sell quickly when they saw the signal and they left. Then the central bank governor, the central bank of Nigeria, and their propaganda machine and their media in Nigeria, they announced to the rest of Nigeria that they have cleared the backlog simply because those who didn't take that bogus fraudulent uh, offer, they were called illegitimate claim. 
And you even believe that your money, government of the country is saying your money, your claim is illegitimate. Your money, and then using their media to bash you, to blame you, to condemn you, to even blame you for the economic problem of Nigeria. How does any of this, how would any of this actually help Nigeria? How? How would any of this create trust or confidence? Like, do you really think them using media to continue to make you, like, you know, trigger you and trigger you and make you feel like something is like... So, they, do they not know that every now and then, they continue to kill whatever even, I mean, whatever trust you, some of you still have in them. A lot of us don't have any trust in them anymore and we will never, ever, eh? They swear for me, trust something that these criminals say. Are they mad? Eh? They say something and you are not there to scrutinize it and check it properly. Now, the airlines and the businesses have come out and said, no, <laughs> we did not collect any backlog from these people. It's all, it's all bollock, nonsense. And it is what it is. However, a lot of you, you are helping them. I know that I may not have so much influence on so many of you. But I will continue to remind us, Sha, that if not for those of you in the diaspora, if not for us in the diaspora, bailing out that system through the back door, and somehow, somehow, after they have depleted, the resources of that country corrupted and then they use corruption to impoverish their people. Eh? We have always been their target. Nigerians in the diaspora, they always, always remit money back to Nigeria. They wanted that money you are remitting back to Nigeria be sent to them through them. So that they can give uh, our families in Nigeria the Naira. They need us to help them strengthen the Naira. There's nothing else to save the Naira. These guys are not investing in manufacturing, in electricity, in anything that could help boost their economy. If they are not borrowing, they are scheming and scheming and scheming on how to kind of get into our pockets. It seems they succeeded in the month of uh, January and, uh, and then February. Do you know that? All of you now. Eh, when they come on social media, they talk, say, I told you, I'm not saying you shouldn't send money to your family members. I send money to my own too. I said, when you, con when you jump on all those dear apps, transfer money, transfer money app. If anybody bring uh, transfer money to Nigeria app for me to advertise on my Egun's diary political, I could easily just tell them, uh, you know, show them the door because I am not going to help a corrupt system that is always looking for their easy way out. Nothing the last ever. Now, the record showed that uh, the money you transfer to Nigeria uh, in, the, in January and in February, some of them through those uh, transfer apps. Mm? they ended up in the pocket of uh, Kadobi. And without any doubt, in two months alone, they have managed to make over $1.8 billion from all of us all over the world. All of now. As the poverty is increasing in Nigeria, that is how we are sending more money, Abi. I'm not saying you shouldn't. Don't send money through their app that they will give Naira to your family members in Nigeria. Eh? Because what you are doing is you are helping them. You are, we are subsidizing Nigeria. You don't have to give money and share money to people on the streets before the money you send into that economy ended up in their pockets. The inflation has, the inflation has finished everything in that place. And um, so is how much money a lot of us are now sending back there. So if you all send money uh, uh, before you descend there, 200 pounds, 500 pounds. Now you are sending 1,000 pounds, $2,000. In a single month, you are sending $4,000. And now you be that. So what are you doing? Kadobi and his gang, they said, if the reason why you don't want them to change money for you 
you don't want to use central bank or you don't want to use bank is because of the disparity in the exchange rate between the black market and the central bank. We can print surplus for you. Oh, yeah, shave that they change them for 1,600 Nairobi. We go change them for you for 1,600. In fact, we will put 10 around it's 1,610. Just send that dollar, just send it. Because the moment they honor that money you are sending, those uh, transfer apps, they have no choice. They will remit the actual dollars to Nigeria. And in two months, they have gathered over $1.8 billion. That is no money from crude oil. That is no money from taxes. That is no money from uh, uh, the foreign direct investors. This is your $100, $200, 500 riyad, eh? 2,000 randi. All this money you are sending. Kadoso is now acting like a champion in Nigeria, saying the Naira is, uh, is gaining its strength again. Because Kadobi is a uh, eh, economist. Meanwhile, Kadobi is using the corrupt system that you have in Nigeria. And he himself and his friends taking a shot at the Naira. When they have enough dollar in their kitty, they will bring it uh, a little bit uh, down because it will be available. Now, them, they demand for Amavi. So the mental it is gone, is back there. And you begin to say, why can't this just stay for like six months? I mean, like, for example, right? If there is uh, actually any real thing, the physical thing that you can point at and say, oh, now this, this. So I just told you now, if all of us who are sending money to Nigeria, stop sending that money via all those uh, transfer app, talk to your own guy, talk to your agent that is sending money for you. Ask them, if I give you this money and you're going to put the Naira in, my, in the bank account of uh, my, you know, my person, right? Are you doing that through the app? Ask your person now. Because some, some of you, eh, I know, instead of the money you are sending to reduce, now, Adobe has devised the means to say, they are running away, Abi. Give them whatever they want. How much they want to exchange? Uh, 1,800. Tell them that they can take it, 1,800. Give it to them. Just collect the dollar. We need it. So we are funding their failure. We are, fun we are, we are subsidizing their incompetence and their corruption. Like, without even noticing or knowing what you are doing. So you might think you are helping Nigeria. No, you are not. You are helping the criminals eh, in Nigeria to survive another day. You know what they have done to Nigerians? But with every, every dollar you put in their hand, every pound you put in their hand, you are helping them to survive another day. And that is why when you look at some, when, when they say Nigeria economy depends on dollar because Nigeria imports almost everything. And then they say, okay, the dollar has gone up. Scarcity because of demand. Those who want to pay school fees, those who want to pay hospital bill, those who want to go on a, you know, government-sponsored uh, training workshop in London, in uh, New York and all these places, all this demand, they are seasonal. Those who want to go to Mecca, those who want to go to Jerusalem, all of this demand all rested on the same dollar that Nigeria is not uh, by any means earning. Because all the sources of earning this uh, same forex is dried up and is completely like tapped straight into the private pocket of these rogues. So every time you send money through their app, Every time you send money that they have to give Naira to your family member, when it is actually like through app, you are bailing them. And every dollar they can get is golden right now. Because if the dollar goes down, if the Naira goes up and the dollar goes down, shouldn't that affect the price of her things? Now, I think I have a theory for that. Because it is artificial, it is fake, it is built on nothing. Naira is fighting back. Naira is fighting back. He's fighting back on empty stomach. He's fighting back on nothing. So what that, that is why it can't last. Okay, it's built on nothing. So the moment the uh, what do you call it? The moment the the lies uh, sort of uh, blown up, it goes back to descending and 
the business or the economy itself cannot adjust to it. If your exchange rate cannot be stable for at least six months, to start with six months, how is your economy going to react to that or stable? Eh? Because if you go to the market and you, you buy at a very I mean, high uh, cost, and you have to resell back to your own customers, you would have to sell according to how you buy. Now, if you go there and they say, oh, dollar is high and you buy at that uh, high rate, and then you come back while you are trying to dispose of all of that, they say dollar has come down. And then you're like, okay, yeah, probably I'm going to go back now and then uh, buy at the rate set that the dollar is now down. But you, by the time you go back, it's back up again. And there you are. You probably won't even be able to afford another supply. So you are stuck in between. So how is that going to? Because it's all artificial, fake, or oh, fake, right? That is another one. Here, you see this issue of, uh, this is now where I'm going to begin to bring some certain stuff to you, okay? But I'm going to take uh, take it from uh, what uh, Tiff Numbu said. Tiff Numbu said that he's going to honor uh, this uh, slain uh, soldiers, okay? He's going to give them national honor because they are heroes. However, there are so many cover-up that they do not want anybody to touch. But we will touch it as we have found. Okay? So, they have told us now that Colonel Ali, the leader of these guys, the man at the top left, eh? they said he's a oil bunker uh ghost buster ghost buster means those who are stealing crude oil in nigeria eh? according to um this guy he said why would they kill them they said the guy has been going everywhere to bust those who are stealing crude oil in nigeria and that uh okwama's uh, area and the whole entire lack i mean the entire axis is uh, oil bunkery hot zone oil bunkering oil hot zone listen and i don't know what kind of uh, you know for a human being to go to that extent to do for people that came on a peaceful means then there's something that goes beyond that i know him the ceo himself Lieutenant Colonel Ali, of recent because we have emphasized we want the oil production of nigeria to increase so that we'll be able to have enough foreign exchange and then things can really go down because we all know the challenges we're going. And so he insisted that all illegal activities within the general area must stop. So he directed all his troops and they were stopping all this illegal bunkering, stopping all these things. And then these are the people benefiting from it. And so when this issue came, I think it came as an opportunity for them to also do and do it with him. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, we know who, the, who did it. We're following up on him and it's just a matter of time. We're sure we're going to get him because they took away again arms. We must get those arms back. We must get those guys so that they can be prosecuted. New Zans Lelegi. New Zans Lelegi. Did you hear him? That Cornell was trying to help Nigeria to make money from crude oil. You know what Nigeria is going through. So he now took it upon himself to stop bunkering so that Nigeria can sell crude oil and make dollar from crude oil. How could anybody do? How could anybody just kill that person? But the truth is that uh, if the man, like, let's respect the dead, just for a few seconds, okay? You know, I told you, right? Make uh, all of us they do well, they do good when you are alive. Make sure say you do good when you are here, so that all of us no go come to your to your barrier on the lie. You will be say now nah, show malu, evil wicked that uh, human. Eh? They come where come one me will come to your barrier on the talk say she's such an angel. Oh my God! When she died, the entire community was so oh God. Now lie you want me will come the lies. That's why do good when you see they alive. Yeah, but let's respect the dead for a few seconds, okay? Because eh? let's assume that. 
the guy and his team they left Kirby, they left Shokoto, they left Borono, they left Taraba, they left uh, Niger. They did not touch uh, what they call Plateau or Benue, all these places where the terrorism is still so strong. But they felt so concerned. Listen, look at their faces. They felt so concerned. Otherwise, Nigeria losing money to oil thieves. And we soldiers, we are here. What are we? What are they? What are we born for? Eh? What are we alive for? What are we soldier for? We need to save Nigeria. So they took it upon themselves. So when they call them heroes, that would make sense that the people were carrying out bunkering, stealing of crude oil, refining crude oil that they are selling. People in that community said they are they are security agents, they are soldiers, policemen. And since this killing started, happened, they said the Nigerian army have stopped everybody from coming there, including the state governor, the state governor, the uh, state po commissioner of police. So no police is what well, don't go there. It's a war zone. They don't want anybody there. So could these people have been killed by their colleagues? like uh, Milady Charm postulated two days ago. No? Now they said they know who did it and they will go after him. There is this young man eh, who made a video and it's kind of like, I don't know. But the guy said what they did in their community is not peace meeting. In fact, is a den of a terrorism against not just the people against nigeria and when they said they know who did it they will get him i beg you i beg you uh, nobody say uh, you know what i mean like when they kill or attack people in northern nigeria the media in nigeria will say bandits uh boko haram uh what else again well you see this uh Okwama, suddenly they said the youth the youth of the community killed 16 soldiers combat ready soldiers well, this guy seems to have already claimed responsibility for it too i just want me you me you watch this one now be my last video when I go do concerning this Okuama and Okoloba fight. Okuama and Okoloba, they get land issue. The land issue, small crisis called the day. Oh, now, nah, where be is your people? We federal government give power to the bomb bakery, to the bomb dessert and they cook. They use the same army they escort their own, they go sell. They betray their own blood. That man, he go use the army, carry people from Okwama community. Three people where they carry, they slaughter them. Now, they know they come back to come carry community leaders. And I know very well, say, once the community leaders are captured, the youth are powerless. The action take place. When they make comments, say, na peacekeeping, all those army come. Point of correction, no army come for peacekeeping. They fight in favor of Tompolo because Tompolo have ordered them to do so. When I say make I show my face, all these on a comment, one of the comments, now just ordinary written. Now writing on just the right. If I know if you talk through for this my land, you know get where I go go when I go talk through when I go believe them. Now this video will be the last video when I go do. My papa, a retired captain. For this Nigeria. He died last year. He retired as a captain in the army. And I don't lost over six of my friends and relatives for this Nigeria. Remember, as an army, this Nigeria is not worth dying for as a country. And they let you know. So if you wanna like, I'm gonna carry this matter from here to the next level. If you like, me federal government declare me wanted. 
I'm proud of it. Yes, I'm proud of it. Now they say, show your face. If I show my face, what do you go do me? What do you go do me? So to talk through for this country now a crime. No wonder what they say, truth is always bitter. Crisis, day between two community. When I know if you call the elders, I know if you call the leaders to settle the issue amicably. If they want to oppress one side for other side, if they call them peacekeeping. And so that they keep peace. Okay, now I go school pass. Now I know the law pass. Now so, oppression. This country, eh, if not before one thing, eh, I for say, eh, make it be like that. North, day or not. South, day or south. All army, if you deserve this country, serve with sense. If you be police, police with sense. This Nigeria, your country is not worth dying for. I they tell now. Do not get sense. I don't know him. However, his face is south there. Uh, I mean, say south there. And he's been fingered as uh, one of the uh, Okwama's uh, youth that the Nigeria military have declared wanted. Somebody who made video to say what was really happening there, the business of the Nigerian army, and why they are taking side, who is actually funding the operation Tompolo. Ah, oh, um, I suppose. I mean, I suppose open like shrine somewhere or something. I mean, make I just open the prayer out somewhere. Eh? Because I remember when I did say, see, Nigeria never finished like this. The giant of Africa, eh? That has uh, the military, which you have the, the army, the navy, the air force, the DSS, the NIA, the DIA, the, uh, uh, the MUMU, and all that stuff, right? Security, there was like, you know, but yet, that Nigeria, who has custom, immigration, civil defense, um, yet yala, and all that, that country cannot protect our own pipeline and waterways against the smugglers of his most precious forex earning resource or resources, oil and gas, that they have to use a retired terrorist because Tumpulu no different from Shekau. Eh? Now they dress in different. Their weapons are weapons of mass destruction. We know that. They will say the operation is different or some or some. But Tumpulu, Baba, Tumpulu, government Tumpulu, the guy where Bokwari they pay 4.2 billion naira every month for seven years. Bokwari, they pay them four, four billion naira every month to protect the pipeline. Because if they don't give them, in boys go blow them up. So instead of uh, getting him arrested and they're prosecuted and even jailed, what did the criminals do? They offered him a deal. And he's now the one protecting the pipeline of Nigeria. He's now the one arresting uh, vessels, stealing crude oil. Oh, ma. Topolo, Topolo, they fight Navy on top water. Navy they guide ship with stolen crude oil. Tompolo boys they come. They say, ah, also, uh, 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 Captain Musa, is that you? No, you are not taking this one this time around. No, 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 no. You are not taking that. I'm arresting it. Former militant, they arrest Navy because Navy, now Navy can't they steal crude oil. And the militant can't they guide their oil. Here we are. What happened to his own operation? Eh? That means he's, he's the police of himself, Nabi. The whole water wheel is controlled by, it's controlled by Tompolo, courtesy of uh, the giant of Africa, Iloshi. Imagine Saudi Arabia, eh? Giving the, the uh, pipeline protection and guidance, including refinery guidance to Osama bin Laden. At least he, he was a Saudi, he's from Saudi. Eh? 
That's what Nigeria is. Iloshi. But you know something? Our boy said, majority of the guys we did there in Atompolo that they work for, from your corner to your general to everybody in Atompolo, you want to make money in Niger Delta, you work with Tompolo. So who are those who gang up and killed these people? Or real, who killed them? What is that connection with uh, Bayelsa and the 11 people? You know, see, they kill 11 people in Bayelsa. Innocent people on the streets. Eh? Imagine you waiting for your daughter or your son. See, hey, look at this boy that I've sent to go and buy us uh, so, so, so and so for the past one hour. You can't come out. They look for him. Junior, junior, junior. Po, po, po. That's it. Because Nigerian army are looking for somebody they said is a militant. That their investigation showed that it was part of those who killed soldiers in Delta State to real law. A lot of people have theory. But before we go into their theory, here is uh, one of those who are now ready telling everybody that you kill soldier, you kill soldier, you die. I know that I don't face for this country. I don't go Meduguru spend four years, fight. I know how many Meduguru soldiers they come from Meduguru die for their for their state. Eh? To protect their land. I know how many Casina, I Casina, I know how many Casina people who come from Casina will die for Casina. But eh, when I get my kill our soldiers for Delta State and all the South South people just they comment, rubbish comments. They say whether soldiers will they die. For now, what are they put them on? Have you been to Medugri before? Have you been to Casina before? Now, who will kill you? But I can't talk when you talk. See, we don't forgive anybody. Eh? We kill the frontline soldier. We must avenge the dead. Who will be worried, boy? I pray, make a day among the oppression. I do good things to the good people. If you don't like this uniform, eh? who knows say, my mama, you don't like this, my uniform, I swear to God, eh? I declare him my number one enemy. I'll come for you. And I don't forget say those that live in glass house do not throw stone at it. If all you touch one hand, you go affect the other hands. So as soon as I don't prize, when I must collect. No often now they say, ah, these soldiers, when I forget say the soldiers get family, get wife, at it. get mama where they pray for them as they fight for the country. But when I kill them anyhow now, they feel say behead them, eh? Open their stomach. Mama will do good things to the good people and bad things to the bad people. Since you don't I'm so sorry. The audio is uh, really, really very low. I did my best to shore it up. Well, wasn't up, there, up enough. That's a Nigerian soldier saying, ah, talking like a regular court or a courtist. It's out. And you can ask, what kind of training they give to them? Soldiers. Those are the soldiers who drug addicts. Eh? Well, he was there saying, ah, I've, I've been a Niger Delta boy. You get my kill soldier. Eh? You do not know that uh, if anybody that kills soldier is like killing my brother, like my blood. I just pray that I'm part of the operation that will come there for you. Ah, you don't prize. Soldier, they tell citizen that they don't prize. He's talking to civilians. Oh, because he is going to be so strong and feel powerful to any civilian and show that power. Well, I will take you to this uh, chat before we continue. What is really going on in that place? Especially since this uh, operation fish out the soldiers' layers. Let's start with this. Um, uh, the first is that uh... The, the military cannot be entirely a judge in his own court, that the military should allow access onto the crime scene. Even the governor could not access it. The commissioner of police lamented yesterday. Uh, it's not done that way. Uh, it's unfortunate it has happened. But to get to the root of it, the military may have to step back. The place cannot remain a perpetual operational area. No, I think they have done enough operation. And let them step back. 
so that people can go there, investigation properly done, and then the, the root of the matter is reached. Going to recommendations, you will, you will agree that uh, these are just symptomatic of the fault lines of the Nigerian state. It's going to continue, if nothing is done, drastically to address the structure, the conditions that make this possible. Take, for instance, 16 military men. Out of the 16 military men, you have how many officers? You have a lieutenant colonel, you have two majors, you have a captain. Then before you talk of the rank and file. This, by every definition, is a strategic team of that Bomadi battalion. It's not the tactical team. And so what was actually compelling about a peace mission in that place that we require the, the, the strategic team going for a tactical mission. So it shows that there are so many things on the line that uh, we are not talking about. That the, if it were actually for a peace mission, wouldn't it be better? Wouldn't it have been better for those community leaders to be summoned to the base in Bomadi for discussions to be held? This was not done. Instead, the entire leadership of the battalion went to Bomadi and be so exposed. And if a mission like that is being carried by the, by the strategic team, why was there no enough tactical cover that they were just gotten and taken out like that so cheaply, the Nigerian military? That is uncalled for. So you will see that there are so many things that are wrong. The Niger data today is a big crime scene. What matters in the Niger data is oil. And everything is subordinated to oil. And so even the lives of the people, their livelihoods, subordinated to oil. And so the mandate is that go and get the oil out at all costs. All of these have to be addressed. If they are not addressed, nothing is going to happen. And the place is under siege. The psychological pressure on the place, the, take for instance, if you are traveling from Wari to Port Harcourt, you will encounter more than 200 roadblocks. So the people are harassed on a daily basis. And it is for nothing but to say that oil must flow at all costs. So if we are addressing all of this, it must be made clear that Niger Delta has to be opened up in development. If we are opened up in development, I don't think we will need so much of military presence for the oil to flow. Right now, every military officer wants to work in the Niger Delta because we know what is involved. Underlying all of this is the issue of bunkering and it's something that we are not bringing to the fore. But it's so unfortunate because if it is not addressed, it is going to happen again. And we will come back to saying the same things that, oh, we ought to have done this. Who did this? And then uh, the military will move in again in their normal way to level a whole community in search of uh, uh, corporates. I, I think that uh, the, 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 the government needs to adopt a different approach, a different approach entirely. Now the narrative has been to hit the entire blame on the Okwama community uh, as against uh, any other Okoloba. reason. And it is not true that uh, Okoloba, it is not true that any misunderstanding between the uh, Anurobo community and the uh, Ijo community could actually bring that level of crisis, that level of tragedy that we witness. It is not true. These communities, the Ijo and Anurobo, they are so integrated, so intertwined, that nothing happens at that scale. For instance, I give you a measure of that is, Bayasa today is considered as a, an all Ijo state. But the deputy governor, the current deputy of governor of Bayasa state is an Urubu man, Lawrence Ewujakbo. His own community is right there in the heart of Bayasa. That is Bayasa West. Ufuni. There is more, right? How do you find that? I mean, you are listening there, right? And before I even kind of add my own, you know, my own uh, uh, to it, he said it loud and clear. The directive is oil 
must flow. And that is why you will see a military, a soldier, they would rather want to walk in Niger Delta area because that is where they are making the kill, stealing crude oil. How do you think Nigeria was losing 700,000 barrels of crude oil every day for over six years on that, uh, on that Bokwari? How do you think that happened? Just like this. I'm interested in what that man is saying. You should too. Continue. In the heart of Bayesa, that is Bayesa West, Ofoni, completely integrated, but they have not been assimilated as a cultural unit. And so for people to say, oh, something has been lingering between the Urubu community and the Joe community, it is not true. Uh, Mr. Obodo, if you might allow me to interject at this point. Sure that, uh, you know, while we're okay. talking about these communities, uh, you know, it's one thing for us to say we are not able to get in, but uh, we know for a fact confirmed reports that people have left. These communities are now deserted. Are you hearing anything from these people? Why haven't we had any official reports? Why has, is nobody speaking to these people who have run away, fleed, escaped uh, th their communities? Uh, you know, from the people that, of course, you, you have boots on the ground. Have you been able to have any, uh, you know, indirect interactions with these people who have escaped uh, these communities to get an eyewitness account of what they experienced? Uh, or, or, or are these people uh, currently being silenced? Yes, uh, 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 many of them are putting their stories on their social media, but uh, we, we, we can't just trust that. But the truth of it is that these community we're talking about, they are rural communities, almost like fish settlements that expanded to their community. We're talking of a community of maybe less than a thousand people. They are afraid. They won't even want to come out to speak. Because what is in their head is that wherever you are found, you will be taken by the military. And so a lot of them are even running away from coming out to say anything. Just the leaders, by way of uh, maybe the, the king of the area and other community leaders that are talking on their behalf. As we talk, there is no body, no life there in the community. It has been taken completely over. And the soldiers will not even allow independent people to enter, to know, to, to have an assessment, on the ground assessment of what actually happened and what is happening now. Everything is, uh, like uh, the, the, the commissioner was saying yesterday, that uh, everything is by uh, signals from his men on ground and DPO and all of that. Why should the military, they are the ones accusing. They, 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 they want to prosecute. They want to also adjudicate. It doesn't happen that way now. What jurisprudence allows that? And so, if we want to get to the bottom of this, the, the, this, this community, these are real ordinary people, ordinary folks. They don't even have the confidence to come out to say, oh, this is what has happened. A lot of them call. They call to say, and the story is that, oh, we have so many people killed, and we don't even have the evidence of those that have been killed, because nobody can even access the place to know what is happening. All of us, we are in the bush. Some of us have run away. And we have, so many have been killed. That is the story we are hearing. And nobody can get into that place to make a confirmation, to know whether it is true or not. Then the military denied that uh, the place was not raised. So how will you now confirm that the place was raised or not raised? Is it not by visiting the place? And nobody can get there. Not even the governor of the state, who is the chief security officer of the state. You see, these are the fault lines of the Nigerian state we're talking about. The military is acting as if it is a sovereignty. No. It's subordinate to civil authority. If the president has said there should be investigation, who are those to do the investigation? The secret police is there. The normal police is there. So can't, this, can't they collaborate, even if it is going to be a, a, a joint effort? Can't they collaborate with other security agencies so that we get the, the objective perspective? But now we, we just run it with a single narrative. It is not proper. It is not proper. And now every other person is saying, no, the, 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 the corporates must come at the use of making it look like there are some people hidden in that community that must be brought out at all costs. If that kind of, if that level of crime has taken place, are you sure that the people that really perpetrated it will still be there, waiting to be arrested? The answer is no.
nobody has been able to give the exact circumstances under which those gallant officers were, were, were taken down. Okay, I want to ask you this real quick, let's wrap up. So which means you would never know. The military is doing everything to cover it up. They are not allowing anybody to access the place. Yeah, they continue to say the community should bring out uh, the killers. Well, the community is already deserted. The people cannot go back and assert, I mean, ascertain how many people have been killed or still left. And for those who know Nigeria military very well, they would have taken the entire, they would have taken all the bodies, make them disappear. They did it in Lagos. They did it in Kaduna. That is what they do. They will kill people, kill Nigerians, take their bodies away to be, to be discarded. You know what I mean? Like, but the entire place, the crime scene has been taken over by this same military. And it is actually a two, two uh, way disaster and disappointment. Nobody will be able to know what really happened there because there is no real external investigation or investigator. The soldiers, the military that died and how they died, their family members to have a closure. You know, if, if your papa died for, as a soldier, to have a closure, you would like to know how he died. And if possible, if he died in the course of duty, man, if the, if the state uh, will kind of get those who did that, that's a closure. But they will never let them know how they died. They are running with one narrative. They were ambushed. They were attacked. They went for peace meeting. They went blah, blah, blah. They have given about four different stories of why those guys were there. And there is no single evidence that says they were actually commissioned to go and carry out a mission that will say, Jimmy, you they hear them where they do operation this, operation that, operation Python dance, operation crocodile smile, or uh, what do you call it, operation uh, leopard jump. They will tell you this one is the, uh, the leader of uh, the operation, uh, uh, what do you call it, crocodile smile. That one is, uh, and I've never seen a crocodile that smiles, these horrible people. Eh? Crocodiles don't smile. Pythons don't dance. When pythons, they dance, if they swallow either an animal, if a human being in the swallow, whatever he's swallowing, he's trying to twist it. He's not dancing, he's hurting or killing something. Little, right? When you see crocodile that open its teeth like that, crushing us, you will find something in his jaw, breaking it and crushing it and killing something. This is the names, uh, you know, the operational names that these criminals, these murderers, these terrorists in uniform give to their operations. But for this one, there was no name, except if they will coin one out there tomorrow. No name. So those soldiers now, hi. Well, Tifnubu said he is going to honor them. Again, eh? Call you here. Three month. The elections of this month teaches the virtue of patience, the virtue of forgiveness, and the sacrifice. You feel the hunger, not because you don't have alternative, but put yourself in the position of hungry children of our country. Put yourself in that position and see how they feel. I want to say thank you for your collaboration and cooperation as both members of the two houses, senators and honorable members. Thank you very much. The baby step being taken by our country is going well. The sacrifices we have made 
and we ask the people to continue to make assuring them that there is a very bright light at the end of the tunnel. All you have to do is have faith. Please don't forget your constituencies. Remember what they are going through. I, I cannot thank all of you enough for what you have been doing. But it's for our country. There's nothing personal in this. It's for Nigeria. And we have no other country except this one. So the challenge it's for all of us to see that country, this country in particular, go the right direction, move forward, make our people happy. And I believe if we continue to collaborate, discuss, entertain each other's view, we will arrive at that promised land, inshallah. I want to take this opportunity to appeal to both houses. I've been watching various committees summoning ministers, head of agencies and everything. I've complained to the speaker. New Zans, I know I should have warned you, Abi, but I thought we all sort of uh, agreed that uh, we are not going to take a call you serious. Abi, well, I just want to take you to the part where he decided that he's going to honor the slain the soldiers. However, he didn't miss the chance of telling uh, the robber stands house of uh, thieves that all these ones that you are some money agencies or money, my ministers. Eh, 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 eh. No. And do you know what the speaker told him? Ah, I swear you, there is no single person that is against you in the house. There is no dissenting voice against you. Every bill you bring to us, we shall pass. But hear this part. Again, eh? Instead of, uh, you know, instead of getting mad at me, eh? You can use your fingers to type any kind of course that comes to your mind and send it to call you, not me. Watch this. I've complained to the speaker. Eh? As the poor people and our public say, let the poor breathe. Let these people do the job. We are not saying you are not influential. We are not saying you cannot do, you do your oversight. But consider the primary duty of each agency or each personnel or the responsibility of the governor of Central Bank or Minister of Finance and Coordinating Economy is for you for me and for the entire nation. So if they are distracted and disturbed, maybe we will shift sitting tonight. And uh, find a way to accommodate one another. 
I am appealing to you. See if you can accept the representatives in some instances. Maybe you need documentations. Don't exercise too much of your powerful position. I appeal to you. I know we have oversight responsibility. I've been through this furnace. <laughs> I know. And uh, we like to exercise that. We are in charge. <laughs> okay, I agree. <laughs> Let us pray for Nigeria. Let us see our country go through this subject. I accept the sympathy and on behalf of the country, I saw your messages from, for the loss of the life of our military men. We have to salute them as our heroes responding to distress call. They met the end of their life in a cemetery manner. Let us work to sympathize and symbolize the fact their life worth the sacrifice they are making for Nigeria. We salute all our men and women in uniform. And we sympathize with them. I also make further pronouncements. They must have a befitting barrier and they will have national honor. Tonight, we are not going to do Idi Amin. Retaliate? Retaliate. <laughs> <laughs> no. We, we go home, pray for our elderly, pray for our our people who had passed on. May Allah grant all our prayers mm -hmm. and our heart desires mm -hmm. and set Nigeria on the path of glory mm -hmm. and share your history of greatness mm -hmm. and you'll be part of our tomorrow today. Oshoni a jeni elebolokun ni amanise ni ni afa emanise ni ni won afi yin sile. I don't know if I was angry or sorry or pissed off or I don't know. I know it's like a torture. Okay, I know. But I just wanted to be on record, you know, in the diary as usual. Could you make anything out of all he said? As a matter of fact, the Nigeria military involved in oil bunkers, stealing Nigerian crude oil, and all of that who now died in the process will receive national honor from the drug lord that was supposed to be in jail. But the Supreme Court said, well, there's nothing they can do to it, even if it's a drug lord. Abi? And yeah, as pronounced, it, so we'll give them national honor. Oh, yeah. Give them befitting barrier. I kind of support that. I don't know. Anyway, the speaker responded. That makes if no no, they get bad impression. We are your... Eh? 
We are your drum beaters. Share you get. We are your boys. Use us. Nobody dare don't pimp. But the leadership of the nation, national, uh, the House of Representatives here present, chairmen of various committees, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to all of you. Your Excellency, we are here, you can see the House of Reps ably represented. As we discussed earlier, that we'll choose people from the six geopolitical zones and also bring people from the leadership of the House to come and greet you in this very, uh, this uh, month of Ramadan, to say Ramadan Karim to you. We are here numbering more than 60. Your Excellency, no words can express the gratitude of the House over this generous songs of dinner you have organized for us and also created time to be with us here. I want to say a big thank you to you. Big thank you to all your staff who assisted one way or the other in making this dinner a very successful one. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Beyond that, Your Excellency, I need to say one more two things about the month of Ramadan. For we Muslims, we know this is the month that he, that he marked for people to reflect, for people to look back on life, particularly the life of the downtrodden, to experience the pain, to experience the suffering, to experience the past, to experience the hunger, the downtrodden express almost every day of their life. Because that will tell you how bad it is to be a downtrodden, to be somebody who cannot afford three square meals. And I believe that objective is being achieved by not only the Muslims, because by coincidence, this month of March also marks the month of Lent for the Christians, likewise the month of Ramadan for the Muslims. So by coincidence, God has brought us all together as leaders to experience such experience. Experience of hunger, experience of thirst, experience of supplication, experience of prayers, so that we can all reflect over where our country is today. And So they are using Ramadan to remember what it is like to be hungry as the hungry Nigerians every day. Because if not for Ramadan, maybe they won't even understand what it feels like to be hungry. So they are thanking uh, Tifnumbu eh, for providing them this and all that. I don't want you to listen to all the video. They can be boring, so I understand. Here is an, an annoying too, Abby. Here is a weird rat. Has something to say about all of Nawe the Jackpa. You the Jackpa. But you go and do the work that in Nigeria you will never do it. That is what uh, Remy will be, rat. Remy Ahmed Tifnumbu, rat. I had to say, I hope you heard it before now, right? Watch. Today. Why don't you use the money to help your neighbor until, you know, we can really get on our feet? So, and those are the things we have to look at. And it's not that government has to begin to give food to everybody and asking, tasking. You know, I, I believe in social development and social investment for people who truly need it, you know. And in the Bible, they even talked about in the times of Jesus, he said the poor you will always have in the land. Mm -hmm. So, and it's for people who God has blessed to help the poor. But now you don't even know who are poor. If you don't have ride a car, they will say they are poor. 
if you don't have a, oh, your own home, they say mm -hmm. they are poor. Even all those people saying they are going to Jakpa or mm -hmm. they go there, what work are you going to do? You know, work that you refuse to do at home, where you have loved ones, you end up going to do that. Even with all their education, they're driving cabs. <laughs> but they won't drive cabs here. Yes, yes. So, you know, there are a lot of things that, you know, as lawmakers we want, especially that of the security, I, I want you to really you take it to heart and, you know, it's really, really very, very important at this time. You know, I, I'm so glad that you are here and this is a holy month. Yeah. As we are fasting, I pray mm -hmm. that God will answer all your, Amen. grant all your petitions and mm -hmm. honor your prayers and, mm -hmm. you know, answer it and forgive you mm -hmm. whatever sins we have committed. New Zans Lily. New Zans Lily. Saying bro rats. Rats turn to motivational speaker. Because I don't even know what to say to her. So it won't sound like uh, I am rude. Because I don't want to be rude. She wants you to stay back in Nigeria and drive a cab. It's all right. People drive cab in Nigeria too. Abi, how many of you? Uh, and then he said, she says something about in the time of Christ that the Bible said there will always be poor in the land. There will always be poor in the land. But that poor shouldn't be them and their family. So if it is biblical, if it is religious, that there must be poor in the land, there must be poor in the land. So if this will not just be poor, ni. at least we have seen poor president and his family. Well, what's that country again? Eh? In South America. There's a country in South America. I think it's uh, Chile or so. No, is it Chile? Not sure. Some of you know this man now. That old, the poorest president in the world, driving B2. Driving 1980B2 or something. Hmm? So why can't they just be those poor and just follow the Bible and biblical teachings? Since the Bible says they will always be poor in the land. So which means, even if, uh, you know what I mean, if uh, the system in Nigeria is naturally creating poor and poor, poor people. So that means it's biblical, Niyabi. Anyway, Madam Rat, a lot of people uh, possibly agree with you, Ma. Because uh, if it is coming from you, it must be true. Just like uh, when I went to, uh, you know, the, the, the place I did my last, uh, last service uh, last Sunday. The church I went last Sunday, they were preaching about, you know, biblical things things that are of god are like you know, anything where you see today is not new they've always been happening and my pastor said if you know about jacob and jackpot then you realize that yahoo started eh, from the beginning of the world pastor milo sobel we don't even know whether to beat them or to work out Nobody knew we were just there like, oh, my kids, 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 Chapter 27, from verse 1 to 44, there was once a man that exists. His name is Jacob. The meaning of Jacob is deceiver. And Jacob is the first Yahoo man that existed on earth. Jacob deceived his father and collected the birthright of his brother Esau and went away with it. He took it as a jackpot because when Esau came back and said, Baba, I prepared the venison, give me a blessing. The father said, none of the blessing is remaining. That is where jackpot started from. Jackpot is collecting all plus all. And that is what Yahoo do to some people. The man that started it, his name is Jacob. And Jacob is in heaven. Person when Papa they heaven, they go hellfire. No, if you hear me, say I hear you now. I hear you, sir. 
Yes. The father of Yahoo is Jacob. And today all over the world, if Yahoo will tell people to hell fire, every family is going to lose a child to hell. How do I mean? There is what we call government Yahoo. There is pastors Yahoo. There is business Yahoo. There is contract Yahoo. There is family Yahoo. Let me define Yahoo before I move on. Yahoo is the ability to deceive and collect from another man. Do you get what I say? Yes, I say Yahoo is the ability to deceive and collect from another man. And we are going to see it in the Bible that God created the Yahoo. He created the man that they deceive and the man that is deceived. Let's see it first before I talk to you. In the book of Job chapter number 12 and verse number 16. Let's see what the Bible says. Because whatever I'm telling you, I have gone deep in my scripture. In my scripture. To prove to people that no man should judge another man. Because what you are judging, as the Bible says, is what you are doing in one way or the other. It might be known to you. It might be unknown to you. Yes? God is strong and always victorious. God. Another person open because I want another version. God is strong and always victorious. God is deceived and the deceiver. And God the deceived. And the deceiver are what? Are in his power. Are in his power. Another version. I read from my own here. It says, with him is strength and wisdom. With him is strength and wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. The deceived and the deceiver are his. The person that they deceive is of God. The one where the deceived person, now God see get her. Yes, sir. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, sir. And he says, wisdom. And strength belong to God. The person where he do Yahoo no be small sense he get now wisdom. Political Yahoo is wisdom. How do they do their own political Yahoo? They will come after four four years and promise you heaven and earth. I will build you this. I will build the road. I will do that. I will do this. At the end of the day, you vote for them. When they win the election, call their number. They will not pick. Somebody say that is a Yahoo. That is a Yahoo. Hallelujah. Amen. Open your Bible to Proverbs chapter 11 verse 1. Let me show you another Yahoo. Another Yahoo is business. If Yahoo will go to hell, every businessman will go to hell. Because businessmen deceive in their business. How do they deceive? Proverbs 11 verse 1. The Lord hates people who use this honest skills. The Lord hates people that use this honest scale. He's happy with honest weight. He's happy with honest weight. What does that mean? People that, what you are selling, what maybe you buy something 20 naira. You sell it for 100, 120. Somebody say that is Yahoo. That is Yahoo. You are deceiving yeah, by yeah, buying yeah. something 20 naira and selling it for 120. And some people, what they sell for one person 100 naira, they will sell it 200 naira for novice. Somebody say that is Yahoo. That is Yahoo. So if you are in business, you are practicing Yahoo, and those who are in handwork, there's a way for them. A man that is doing handwork, he knows that the material he needs to repair, your maybe your car or your machine, might not cost him more than one thousand. But they will say this is handwork. Oh, he will make it ten thousand, so that he will eat nine thousand and use one thousand to buy what you need to service your car. Somebody say that is Yahoo. That is Yahoo. It's a deceiver. It's not telling you the truth. He deceives you and collect what he wants by the handwork he has. So if you are thinking the only people that are practicing Yahoo are those boys who are present, you are lying. Government are doing it. Pastors are also doing it. Let me teach you, Pastors Yahoo. If a man of God tell you, just like one man of God say, a popular man of God, if anything I cannot give to God, it means I don't have it. What can you give to God? Is God lacking anything? Read your Bible in the book of Psalms, chapter 50. It says, I am God. The whole earth belongs to me. If I am hungry, I will not tell you. He said, the sheep, the cow, every animal on the field are mine. He said, if I become hungry, I will kill one and eat. So God is not interested in you giving money to him. So any person... What shall I say unto the Lord? Yes, Lord. All I have to say. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you,
last two. So, that was uh, the last Sunday sermon. But we need to move on. Two days ago, Chief Numbu said is uh, releasing the names, I identities, he called it, identities of uh, the terrorist uh, or terrorism sponsor in Nigeria. And they listed Cake Osama bin Gumi's aid as one of the financiers. So Cake Osama bin Gumi has fired back today that Tifnumbu or the federal government of Nigeria has no right to declare anybody terrorist sponsor because they are the real sponsor of terrorism in Nigeria. If they cannot negotiate with the terrorists and they allow the terrorists to continue to kill people, the Nigeria government is the main terrorist. Tifnumbu has no right or power to declare anybody as a terrorist sponsor. Well, why won't uh, Gumi say that? Eh? I say they have been making so much money from this kidnapping ransom thing, Sha. Right under our noses. Imagine somebody, eh? Where they collected 100,000 right, for transportation. Say, you want just that one for transport, too. Say, I would just want to, I just want to go, to go and see the terrorists that kidnap your family. So, for transportation, 800,000 from poor people. And it was all done through the Sheikh Osama bin Gumi. How come these women told their story? And Nigeria, nobody acted on this. Do you remember this? And you just say, just, I just they go, they go, they go, they do meeting, they do committee meeting, then carry us to Gumi's house, and we do meeting, the same who could meet uh, with uh, uh, Ahmed, I forgot the name. They invite one thing that they come, and we gather money, almost 800,000. We give her, we say that one is a transport motor. And I started crying. He said, Me, I'm the wisdom. I don't have much back. I just they train this boy to help me tomorrow. Please, he said that one, no consignment. Who will be the person? The person is a plan that invited come for one office for for Kaduna Dio. We just uh, try the beggar, he said no. He said until you pay so 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 amount. He said we don't have much. He said almost uh, 500 million. Initially, they asked, they, they, they were after the government paying that money, 500 million. So after, when any time they call, like me in particular, they kept calling me, Madam, Kijeki Magana, the governor, that I should go and talk to the government so that they will go and pay that money. So all I kept telling them was, I am a widow. I don't, I cannot have access to the government. Maybe if my husband were to be alive, maybe you know somebody who will help, who will help him to talk to the government. But I am a widow. I don't have, I cannot have access to the government. So when they kept calling me for almost two weeks, I kept telling them the same thing. So at the end, they started calling that, okay, uh, how much have you people gathered? I said, how much? Who are the people you are talking about? They said, the parents. I said, no, we are, we are poor people. Most of us are widows and even the, those that have their husbands and those that even have their wives, they cannot, they are petty, they are peasants. They are peasants. So they don't have any money to, to, to contribute. So he said, oh, you pull, if government does not pay, I said, we, all we are trying to do is to see if the government can assist us. Okay, are you saying that if the government does not pay, you people will allow you to leave your children? Okay, we have already killed one. That was what he told. And, and all these meetings were taking place under the... Uh, coordination of Sheikh Osama bin Gumi and he was never invited for questioning. But they went around and then they picked his uh, aid, Mamu, you call Mamu, but they left uh, Gumi. Now Gumi is now saying, declaring that we'll give you that power. You, people, they talk, you said they talk, Paul, but say you the Chris. You have no such power. So as it is, the list that Ifnumbu is parading 
is just to make uh, or to amuse himself, according to Gumi. Tomorrow is another day. We we'll wait uh, for the sun to set, for the day to break, before we we'll see, uh, you know, where this is coming from. Because we are talking about Kaduna Abi. So some people now they cited the Kaduna little finger. El Rufaya of Kaduna. I want to spot him at uh, SDP Secretariat. And that quickly, you know, brought him straight uh, to the front uh, pages of the media. What's going on? And he said, I don't care what anybody says or anybody feels like. But you see the man, we put something with this man, eh? this man on the left. Uh, the man uh, wearing glasses on the left. Now, Vidato, the guy that TFCC arrested because he looted over $6 billion of uh, electric power money in Nigeria. Is uh, Obasan just former minister? Just like El Rufaya of Kaduna, they were both former Obasan just ministers. Waiting El Rufaya, they do with SDP and all that. Is that a political stunt? As if no one really, really abandoned him. But who cares anyway? But I just want to show you. Let it be on record too. Huh? Yes. Two seconds more. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Please don't, don't go on their Twitter or X. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. 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 I think it's just Okay, okay. Uh, 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 okay. Yes. Two seconds more. Mm. Yeah, thank you. Please don't, don't go on their Twitter or X. No, 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 What's he cooking? What is El Rufaya up to? We don't care too. It's just that uh, when we see him, we go talk. Huh? All right. So let's leave Kaduna, you know, and all that, and let's start coming down south. Eh? But we'll stop for Kogi. I'll show you where Kogi women were fishing. Well, in fact, Kogi is where fishing and the river too. Take a look. <laughs>
Somebody said, uh, this is, someone said, what's going on here? Uh, somebody asked, uh, what's going on here? And that person responded, I think it's a festival, like Argungu festival. So what do you want to call this festival for Kogi now? Eh? Kogi festival. <laughs> I buy everybody, they also for food. You go to battery in the If your net catch frog, now waiting your car that I carry be that or burn it clean and work. Oh, go see, go jet festival. Eh? I'm gonna be like, some of you don't even know what's in the happen. Eh? But it's all right. So let's come down south and stop at, uh, you know, this place in uh, Emo States. All right. Uh, it's called, I'm going to go check the name again. Because I sort of, uh, you know, do mix them together. Say, oh, Haji. Oh, Haji. Somebody made this video. <clears throat> and for context, right, I'm going to let you see it first and I'll say mine. Good day. Good day, everyone. Um... I'm about to show you people something everyone really needs to be aware of. This is, uh, as you can see, uh, a new oil company called uh, Stalin Glover. Uh, drilling new, uh, should I say drilling oil? in Obiti or Haji. This is a new company. So far, so good. They've discovered that eight oil wells here. They started drilling, I think, last year or so, uh, 2023, from my gatherings. They already have uh, eight oil wells stock. And from my findings, I heard, from my little investigation, and then as I came here, I heard, that uh, there are over 75 or U.S. scattered along uh, around this area. Um, you can see they have about uh, about uh, three to four turbines here around this place. There is 24 hours electricity, but when you go into the village, there is what they call abject poverty in this very village, this Obiti village. They don't even have electricity at all. They don't have electricity wire. Talk more of seeing it 24 hours. They are complaining that their people are not working in this company already. Where well, there are eight discovered, they've discovered eight oil wells already. Nothing is happening. That just nothing is happening. They are not getting anything at all as it stands. This is how it begins. Before you know it, now the youth will become restive and carry guns. I mean, seek for solution. So they go about it the way they think they could go to get whatever they want. But if this company at this early stage could give the community what they rightfully deserve, there's electricity that are about three to four turbines they are wasting. Why not extend it to the village? Extend it to the village. Let everybody there have light. Why not build their roots? 
why not employ their youths? Why not make their life very easy and then so that you can have a free access to the oil? Build them schools, build them hospitals, and all what have you. Make them live comfortable life. So this is once again in Obete, already discovered eight oil US. It's already discovered here in Obete. Obete is in Ohajibemo. Ohajibemo is in Imo, current Imo state. And Imo state is in the heart of Biafra land. This is a report compiled by Omochuku writers. I am reporting to you right from Ohajibemo. This report will be published in a week or so. This is the month of March. Thank you very much. Obete in Ohaji Egbema uh, local government area in Imo State. You heard that you saw all of that. I probably don't even need to add anything to it. The community where they have <clears throat> six operational wells, oil wells, the community has no electricity. They don't even have electric poles. Talk less of having, talk less of having electricity, I mean electricity transformers. They do not have road, they do not have schools, they do not have any real infrastructure. They are youth that they are roaming about. But those who are taking the money and the resources, eh? you are celebrating them in your magazines in Nigeria. You are celebrating them in your, at your different, different forums because they are the rich people, the rich in the eh? The multi-billionaires. Now man, they do man, black man to black man. Anyway, thank you. It's not all gloom and doom. This <clears throat> is a promising image that somehow, somehow, I just feel like, wow. And it is coming from Abia State in Aba. Indeed. Eh? There can actually be some hope on the horizon on the side. They said they are actually having the government of the states. They are planning to have such centers, centers like that. They are planning to have that like across their state. And their job is to help continue to mass produce, uh, you know, <clears throat> clothing and all that to the point that uh, Abba made, Abba made would actually uh, eventually gain his own uh, expected um, recognition as the home of originality too, which is interesting when I saw that, I was like, oh, that's, that's cool. But in Elori, for some reason, eh? whether it is for double taxation or extortion, the Igbo traders in Elori have been off and on. And just two days ago, they had to shut down the entire shops. And I mean, like all of them across the vicinity because of what they called special targeting from the state government that has continued to make them and their businesses a target of extortion. Even though the government of uh, Kwara State called it uh, taxation. But these Sibu traders believe that, no, this is an exception. Those who are carrying out all this taxation uh, actually single them out for special persecution. That is so obvious. That they protested so this time they actually shot their businesses that's that's some strange stuff right for an igbo man to shut his business normally when you tax them or when you think you want to uh, ruin them by uh increasing whatever you charge them it's not hard for them they just put the entire whole expenses on the on the entire goods the consumer will pay for them but for an igbo man or igbo i mean igbo traders to shut their shop in protests against a massive extortion in a lorry, then it's probably really, really a, a huge extortion 
that is uh, possibly, you know, tribally, or should I say, you know, kind of uh, has some tribal and uh, ethnic connotation. That's what they said, right? But here, I'll show you. Like I said, it is not just tax, I mean taxation. There's some uh, state-sponsored uh, extortion too, that they believe they are the main targets. Just like uh, the Ronukus of Lagos. Those ones are actually demolishing all the businesses. They don't want them. You know what I mean? It's unfortunate. So why some? You know, Lagos State is a place where, uh, for your own safety, they believe, don't cross the motorway. It's dangerous. It's so crazy that when you are arrested, there's no means of trying to stop you from doing it again rather they would open a business or open shop on you to extort you it's not about rescuing you it's about stealing or extorting you at the end of the day so now when i hear that i do not know why a lot of people don't cross pedestrian bridges to save their lives instead of crossing the motorway which is dangerous honestly but somehow a lot of people prefer to cross the motorway the expressway, than use the pedestrian. But when I hear that uh, they are charging people who carry, if you carry load in Lagos and you want to, you know, you want to uh, climb uh, their pedestrian bridge, you will be charged money. 100, uh, 100, uh, 100 naira about a carry load come like this. A thought is standing next to the bridge and it will tell me I need to pay 100 naira before I could cross. Because that's how they run Lagos anyway. So here is one of them. And I heard that the Lagos State government and others, right, they have uh, they've acted on this. But it's so ridiculous that somebody carrying load and you, able-bodied man, you'll be standing there and say they cannot cross the bridge except they pay you 100 naira. Like, are you for real? But it is for real. <laughs> Imagine that. Eh? I'll leave uh, more live on like that, okay? I am going to take calls because I know a lot of you probably would uh, want to be part of this uh, from when it all started. I hope uh, you watched from the beginning, right? So if you are still there watching, right, take a moment and like the broadcast if you haven't already, okay? Like the broadcast until you see that that thumb up, that white thumb up, right? Until it turns uh, uh, blue, okay? And that will be you. You don't do it if you have already done it, right? And then my line is going to be open. Yes, it's open. And the number is on your screen too. When I get back, I will take calls. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>
Thank you. Sorry, sorry about yeah. that. Well, I do have a caller on the line. Good evening to you, Baba. Yeah. Good evening, my good general. Good evening, sir. Uh, yeah, I'm calling from Italy. I think now I'm becoming a regular caller now. Yeah, regular, bright. Is that you, <laughs> right? Oh, yes, yeah, Wilson. Wilson is my name. Oh, is it Wilson? I do have a bride yeah. in Italy too. Okay, grand. Yes, yes, I, uh, yeah. I will yeah. remember that now, Baba. Thank you. How are you this evening? Uh, I'm very good. Um, you know, if you give us this antidote, sometimes we start we start even reacting to even. In fact, to catch these people on 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 our life, all of them, the the they, they are evil. They they don't even want to stop. That's the, the the problem I have is that they don't even want to stop, and they have gagged all the whole media. The problem is that they have gagged all the whole media in Nigeria. No media apart from uh, Rufai that is even trying his best. All that all that things they are doing, they continue lying. Look at what they did in people's village. Look at what they do. They drive those people away. And you see, they are still lying. Could you believe they don't even want to say the truth? That's 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 the irony of all these things. No proper investigation. Nigeria is a crime scene. Yes. That is all I have to say. Nigeria is all crime scene. Both from the church, both from... The, yesterday, I was talking to some people. I said, if I have my way to become anything in Nigeria, my first mission is to make sure that anybody that I had that is going to church or talking about uh, Quran eh, should, be go, should be sent to prison direct. This is how South Korea did and be free. South Korea, you see, that is what giant today. They drive away Christianity and all, all this because because the more these people go to church, the more they are being. I don't know whether they, I don't know what they listen to. They cover their ear. They don't even care about what is happening around them, thinking that somebody is coming from somewhere to come and save them. Brother, no Jesus. I just want to tell Nigerians who are listening. Nobody is coming to anywhere to save you. You have to save yourself, save your environment. Nobody is coming to save you from anything. If you don't know, know it today. Nobody is coming. Do, these criminals we are allowed to be ruling us. This is how they will be continue ruling us until we wake up. Know that nobody is going to save us. Right. If you don't My, save, if you, 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 stop, they will stop. Yeah, Baba. They will not stop. If my good life make a preach to you from now to 30 years time, if you don't wake up, say enough is enough. There is nobody will save you. Nobody will save you. These people are criminals. These people are criminals. My good, could you believe, man? Look at uh, Ababio. Ababio stole 90 billion. Uh, you have said this thing before to, to, to this our uh, audience. I bought your store 19 and that nine they use they do off your mic, uh, off your mic, honorable minister, off your mic. Now, I buy your nine they use do them. This same man become your senate president. This same man, yeah, this criminal, this man is telling this man is telling you that uh, it will be okay. This man that stole your 90 billion and still telling you that it will be okay. Look at yeah. Dan, uh, uh, Gandola. Gandola, they showed you, they showed you the person contractor will give them money, show them, show everybody, they catch contractor. Whether they don't keep the contractor, who oh, nobody knows. Now the man is the PC chairman. Yeah, man. Anyway, I'm not Masi, talking. Let me, let me take another one because of our time. All right. So thank you so oh, much. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. That. Yeah. So, thank uh, you. Here. Oh, did I just miss that too? Hang on. I think I got it. Uh, hello there. Ah, uh, Papa Maleku, my brother. Maleku, Papa Baba. How are you today? Oh, I'm good, Maleku. I'm good. I'm good. Thank Andrew you for all you do, my back. brother. So how? Uh, uh, You've been you've been here all night, or oh, did you join? Did you join us? Oh 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 no no no! I've 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 been here all night. I've been I've been watching you from the very beginning, and uh, of course, like I said, you know, my goal, the, re the reason why I follow you is because, as I told you, 20, 2015, I became a political asylee, came to America and applied for asylum, and by the grace of God, I got granted. Because, because, as in. Everything you say is like, thank God I'm not crazy. Thank God I'm not crazy. 
Because in 20, 2013, 14, 15, hmm. when fools wanted to vote for Buari, <laughs> I was shouting, I was pleading, I was begging. But even some members of my family were okay with me dying. Hmm. And now I'm here in the United States of America, the greatest country in the world. And these same fools are calling me, begging me for money. <laughs> Marigu, right. thank you for vindicating me. Thank you for vindicating people like us. God bless you. Now, the only reason why I called, the only reason why I called is two points. Two points. Simple two points. I want to reply right. I want to reply that bitch. And I also want to give credence to that pastor that was breaking down the different type of yahoo yahoo okay you get the message can so, come back uh, somehow but the context is so straightforward Baba. Oh, my yeah. dude, my dude, i will get there i will oh. get there let us start with that bitch rat mm. remy tunubu said that nigerians are going to countries doing jobs that they will never do in nigeria i feel insulted my ego that bitch insulted my hard work and may God do it so punish her and her entire household. Let me just give you a brief story. When I came to this country and I applied for asylum, the first job that I did, I worked in the warehouse. I was very good at my job. I became a warehouse manager. From there, I worked in construction. Not only that, I started out as a geotechnical engineer and I became a site engineer. By the grace of God, the job that I'm currently doing right now that is making me feel like an emperor, I cannot say it, but let me tell you, it involves me having security clearance. My Tunubu does not have the security clearance I have. Remy, that bitch, does not have the security clearance I have. Do you know where I've been in this United States of America that that bitch is saying that that Nigerians go and, and, and do jobs that they yeah, never they say, do. They say that right? so easily, as if to say, so easily. Well, I, I mean, as so if to easy. say, somebody said work, legit work, which they never had in uh, their lives, right? We they never uh, had this it's, rubbish. It's, it's something to be ashamed of. Okay. Uh, and they say that, to say everybody who leave Nigeria, go what? abroad, my and you know what I mean? Let me finish. Let me even finish. Let me even let, 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 let tell you where I've seen Nigeria this country. My go have been to NASA. Nigerians are working in NASA. Yes. Over here in uh, over here close to DC, the NASA office in Maryland. Nigerians are working there. My go, the NSA head office in Maryland, Audience Maryland, National Security Agency, Baba Nigeria get there. My go, the biggest hospital in Maryland. John Hopkins did there. Do you know how many Nigerian doctors did there? And this bitch, when you do put a young bitch. Oh, you see these useless politicians, oh, what a reward for you. My good, what a reward for you. They have disrespected us to the core. Honestly. And she's saying that instead of, instead of those foolish fools to fix up that country so that the job that we do here, we can come and do it back home. They are disrespecting us. Mm -hmm. And they want us to send their money. Our foolish Nigerians are still sending their money there. My good, do you know how many Nigerians that are, that are in the American military? Baba. I have a colonel as a friend. Nigerians are in the Navy SEALs risking their lives. Are you crazy? mad. Nigerians are part of the police force in America. Baltimore Police Department. Nigerians are there. FBI, Nigerians are there. Uh -uh. Yeah, can you see what you that bitch is saying? Yeah. In uh, what do you call it? Uh, science and technology, like everywhere we are there. 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 Let me now go to my second point. My yeah, second point about quick, the pastor. Okay. I'll make it time. quick. Eh? Very yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah. I'll make it very quick. You see, what the pastor was saying, I love the fact that he was backing up a Bible verse. 
But even though people in the chat were laughing and saying this one is mad, Michael, remember I've told you before, Nigerians lack critical thinking, it gets reasoning. So they will laugh at the pastor, but the pastor, the young fat are big. Mm. The pastor is yanni fat, my yegu. Let us be serious, critically think, mm. reason deep. All what the pastor is saying is the truth. But my yegu, make foolish Nigerians pray to their sky daddy. Or more, nobody, they come save those zombies. Break up Nigeria and save lives. Thank you, my ego. God bless. Bro. You have a good one, okay? And then uh, take it easy, bro. Here we have another girl yeah. on the line. And here, hello. Yeah, Maya Go. Good evening. Good this evening. is Ogogo calling from Italy. Say that again. Who? Ogogo calling from Italy. Oh, oh, oh. Ah, okay. Yeah. How are you doing today, <laughs> Papa? <laughs> Yeah, I was trying to fine. I'm going to like a shot in that. I said, say it again, and you actually say it again. Then I'm going to stick to that. Oh, wow, wow. Baba, oh, okay. Thank you so much for joining no. me. Oh, everybody oh, can hear you, Baba. Go on. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I have three three things to talk about. Right. First thing, Tinubu does not can never in in his life surround himself like person with Mayago. Hmm. The only person, the only people he can surround himself with is people like Frostros Kayamo. Because Crazy those are the nice. people who know those are the people who know his character, who know his well be. So for him to for him not to be exposed, he had to carry those guys along. Yes. Second, secondly, you see everybody has everybody are are money for but let's say let's say the Thief Nobu is money for the the slave soldiers. What about the civilian, the innocent civilian that that was murdered by the by the by those by those soldiers? Nobody is talking, talking about, about them, Baba. Do you, do you understand? They are not talking about them. You know, it's really unfortunate. And the uh, and the uh, theory, you see, the system of Nigeria. I went to Nigeria. I just came back about two weeks ago. Oh. Everybody begin excuse face, no joy for the country. I decide to think that even if they share the Nigeria into pieces, mm. I don't think it's going to work. Yeah. Nah, it's not going to work because everybody have anger within themselves. Mm. You get what I'm saying? I with everybody you. have anger. Everybody have angers within themselves. So it's going to be very, very, very difficult. You know difficult. what somebody told me, uh, who was my brother? Eh? He said, yeah. he said, uh, you know, back in the days where you would just see some people, where they would just smile, as if they walk up for road, right? You could see some people, they wear smile randomly. Some people, they even they do random, random uh, kindness for road like that. It's all those things now. Everybody just, they carry the face, like say that they fight somebody or they are just coming back from a fight or just going to one. Everybody my, is angry. My, my, Baba? My ego, my ego, if you are, if you are coming, if you come, if you come from abroad and you are walking the streets of Nigeria, you'll be, you'll be afraid. You'll be thinking, did I offend this person? Ah, did I match this person? <laughs> you know, that is your thing. Then, hey. then, 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 my last, then lastly, hmm. lastly, you see, uh, the way things are going on in Nigeria, you see, uh, Tinubu, Tinubu have nothing to offer. Even if it is a boy scout that threatens Tinubu, if anything happens to a boy scout, Tinubu will be afraid of, afraid of them. He, he can give them a national honor. Because why? Though maybe you will be thinking those people where then, where then, if, if they can be able to talk about him, about his uh, legitimacy, maybe something is going to happen. Even if, if, if it is Boy Scout, Tinubu is going to recommend them he's ready, he's ready very well. To, to because, pay them off. Hmm. Yeah, because he, he don't want anybody to expose him. Thank you very much. God bless you, Uwaho, my brother. I will remember that, eh? And I'll figure out how I'm going to shorten that. Thank you so much, and my regards to everyone, okay? You have a good one, Baba. So that's uh, a brother from uh, Italy. I've actually gotten two people from Italy tonight, uh, which is great. I have another caller on the line. Hello there. Hello, Maya. Hello, sir. How are you? 
This is Austin. How are you? I'm very well, Austin. Uh, thanks for asking. You know, just say more, say more. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you've been. Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can. You need to talk to me and ignore that broadcast, okay? You and I should continue to talk on the phone. All right. I just tried to organize. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Uh, can you hear me now? But if you are waiting for me to react on the screen to be sure that you are connected, it's going to be so awkward. Like we are going to be going back and forth. But yes, I can hear you loud okay. and clear. It's better you even walk I've away from that. the room. I... Yeah. Walk away from the room. When we finish, you come and back. And I say, hold oh, my Lord. <laughs> The, you know, the, the highlight for me this evening, are, are you there? I'll deal with you, Austin. The highlight for me this evening would have been something else, but that preacher, that preacher mm. caught my interest. You know, the reason being, yeah. a, a few days, in fact, I've been thinking about, you know, about five, six hundred years of oppression, slavery, uh, colonialism, and everything did not kill or had not um, actually destroyed completely the Africans, uh, both in, on the continent and in the diaspora. Mm. That means that something is brewing. You know, there's always time for something. He preached very well because you cannot become uh, someone like Tinibu now would tell a Yahoo boy that he's doing wrong. And, mm. Um, mm. you know, that is where I saw it coming. The guy balanced it up to say that, look, these things happen. On. It's happening over time, but we can still get along. If you look at the European history, they used to burn people, the, the crime they've committed, they are still on, they are still advancing. It is us that is that are not knowing, that doesn't know what to do. And the bottom line is we don't love ourselves. We don't value human beings. We don't know, feel the pains for one another. No empathy, no, commun no communalism. That is if the, everything is fine, it, it, you know where I come from. They say and all that. No, exactly. No, mm. no sense of community. Where, where I come, they say, you know, um, I'm a baby room, That means, you know, the the whole town, uh, the yam belongs to the whole town. Only one person has a piece of the yam. So that tells you the community spirit. That tells you that when you hold hands, things can can be better. Now, right. and my second point is what the, the last caller said. The, the other, the previous caller was very <laughs> upset with um, Mrs. Tinibu or whatever her name is. Of all the, is, the is, insults. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the, of all the insults you put on those who are willing to leave the country wherever they want to go to have a good life or a better life, something better than, the, in fact, pursue their lives, you know, goals and aspirations. Now, she, she, kind of diminish everything, put everything yeah, down to the lowest denominator. Like, uh, you know, once you leave Nigeria, mm -hmm. you're just going there to go and walk inside this. I mean, that is insulting, you know, especially for a lot of us who have actually sacrificed so much, right, to get to wherever we are today for somebody like them, okay, who actually abused the privilege and made uh, that name, that, that, that uh, nationality, uh, something of uh, a weapon fashion against us. It's people like them, drug pushers, yeah. right? Those who had the chance and they ruined it at the time. But yeah, they are. They are still ruining it even when they have the power to fix it, only for them to be throwing jai by toss. It's quite in insulting. I agree. And the funny thing is, the funny thing is, what she did not mention, she said, oh, uh, with all their certificates, they go there, they drive taxi and stuff yeah. like that. Why didn't she say, what what she and her husband did in Chicago that people go there and do these things too. What were they doing? She didn't mention it. what did what did they do? Exactly. What did, what was she doing in Chicago? Was she, she a was nurse? Opening bank was accounts she a that uh, drug was, money was, were being deposited. Was, That's why her name was mentioned in that FBI uh, uh -huh. document. Man, Austin, these people don't go yeah. make up well. They don't go. They don't go die well. I swear. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's her, her own because that is the the, the, the lack of him. But the, the, the crime, you see, when you mentioned what Tinibu, what Tinibu was doing in Lagos, is Tinibu. They said the, the, the so-called strategy he has is the strategy of a, a criminal mind. That is the way he operates. But he's gotten what he's gotten. 
but we are going to see how far it's going to go. Wow. But another point with this military thing, you know, with the death and destruction that the military took to the Niger Delta to to Edo State, to, uh, to... it is very symptomatic. Yeah, okay, it is very symptomatic of the fact that what they were trying to do, two things. If you look at the time, the timing of this thing, and then other things that followed, they are trying to bury that news about all these um, Senate. Um, pardon and all those things. Uh-huh. That news has been buried. Nobody is talking about it, you know, because the the gentleman who the the man the community man who was talking about what the soldier came to, he was very very measured. You know, that man was very measured. He wasn't talking directly to the point, but you can notice that he's asking questions. But others do ask directly. What was the military's purpose of going to that community? They went with two gunboats, and then all of a sudden. They are saying that they've been attacked with all their firepower. But anyway, I mean, uh, my, my, let me finish by saying this. Nigeria has two options. You know, there's a dichotomy of need, of vision people have. One, you know, Nigeria should break up. Odudua, Biafra, let us all go home. And then the Fulani should can find their way to Nigeria, wherever they came from. Or that is by, by consensus, okay? Right. Or by, um, by explosion. Nigeria would explode, and then the pieces will, will fall apart, and we'll find our way. Find, maybe if we, if we agree, just, and, uh, you know, but... the survivors can then say, you know, like that. Eh, whenever they don't go up in smoke, like uh, like you said, uh, uh, an internal implosion. Okay, so we can't come and say like maybe in our, our own house with this now. We don't run, Buddha. All of us will come out alive. We come and say, Jukuma. Uche, in fact, I, you don't come, you make come out. Prefer that yes, option. I make come out. Oh, bring your flag, bring your flag. I be Afra, but I be that oh. Olam, we did here. Yeah. We saw. You know what I mean? You know, like, you know what people said about that Austin. My, Those who make uh, I know, peaceful. Own, I, I, go on, sorry. The peaceful one will be difficult. Why? Because the criminals who are working at the upper level, they don't have tribe, they don't have nothing. Uh-huh. They are friends because yeah. they are they are stealing together. It's going to be very difficult. They will not call a referendum. But Deba and Joe, I think, you know, was mentioned since 1963, uh, this thing that the, some governors, mm-hmm. exactly, some governors would not, you know, uh, assent to or refuse to look at. Tinubu would not go back and say, oh, let yeah. us uh, restructure. He will do that. So that is the sensibility side. But I believe in the Big Bang theory <laughs> that should solve Nigeria's problem. You know, thank you let so much, Austin. Bang. Eh? Thank you. I mean, I wanted to add something Thank earlier, you. but because of our time, I'll say it when you are when you are gone, okay? Thank you very much, Austin. Now, I am taking another call, but what I wanted to say while Austin was talking that is, uh, you know, when he says something about, you know, we love, we want it to be peaceful, we are, we are advocating for it, we are appealing for it, we are appealing that this bloodbath should stop and let everybody go their separate ways now, like, no fight. Uh, but uh, it seems that that is not going to work or ever work. So I wanted to say, but remember that they say those who make a peaceful dissolution impossible, peaceful breakup impossible, they will make a violent breakup inevitable. Possible, inevitable. It will Google it. Hello there. Hello, my general, my young general. How are you oh, doing, brother? This is the African Wahala. The African Wahala. How are you, Baba? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm doing very good, bro. Great. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Thank you for the great. Yes, sir. Thank you for the great presentation as usual. Thank you. Man. Um, I wanted to chime in on one topic that you stated yesterday. You know, um, that was like the first thing you spoke about, about how it is impossible for Nigeria and Nigerians to do anything meaningful for ourselves. The only thing we try to do is to survive. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a country, we have a so-called country that relies on crude oil to generate revenue. But for 64 years, almost 70 years, we've been saying 60 years, now we are close to 70 years. This country has not given us the opportunity to drill that oil by ourselves. No to conduct the oil exploration, to convert it into reusable you know, products, like the way Saudi Aramco does and all these other countries, it's impossible. Now let's go into producing food. 
or ourselves. Now, they say the people are 200 million people. It's fake, okay? I genuinely don't believe that Nigeria's population is up to 200 million people simply because the last credible population census was around 1992 or 1990. The one they had in 2006 was highly contested. It was useless. We all know how everything works in Nigeria. Nothing works. So for the, I would assume, 180 million people, we don't even have the capacity to feed these people. Apart from the fact that terrorists are destroying the farms that would have provided food to feed us, we don't have the ability to manufacture machinery when it comes to harvesting food, growing food in large quantity for millions of people. We would have to go and start begging USAID, IMF, China Nexin Bank. We are begging all these people all over the world, hey, please donate tractors to us so that we can cultivate food in large numbers. And then a useless governor will do a launching program for those tractors that were imported from China. This has been the consistency in this country for 60 years. I spoke about um, natural resources. We are unable to generate revenue by ourselves. We have to lease it out to Shell, BP, Chevron. Chevron has left a long time ago. Shell has left early 2024 after sucking the country dry taking all what they need and they've departed, yeah. is nothing else. Now let's talk about security. We also don't even have the capacity to provide security for, for ourselves. For 65 years of the existence of this contraption, no important, weapon important manufacturing company. Uh, CEO, important national assets, like the crude oil, the pipeline, and all of that, that is supposed to be the backbone of Nigeria's forex disorder. That's something so important. Nigeria's uh, the protection and the security of it is not under the control of Nigeria. How is that even like making anybody sleep at night and say Nigeria is a country? How, 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 how? is that? How is that a country? Like the people that are still proud of this country. You think about it for a second. How can you have a country for sixty-five years? You can't feed yourself. You have to beg other people to provide you with machinery to feed yourselves. You can't even generate your own revenue from your natural resources. You have to give it out, sublet it to European companies, Chinese companies, American companies for 65 years. And these people from all over the world, they actually don't rate us for the most part. They see us as, man, these people are, they, these people slightly have a lower IQ than us. They genuinely believe that, even though that's false. But a lot of them yeah, believe that because right. of initially, what we are manifesting. Initially, they will say it's corruption, but it's, to them now, it's, this is like these people are like uh, subhumans. It doesn't doesn't look like uh, it's only greed. They're no guesses at all at all. That, that's all what we manifest. The only people, the only people that actually prove them wrong is when they meet us in the Western world. Like um, one of our brothers was speaking earlier about in Maryland, USA, you have Nigerians working in U.S. military. In big hospitals running top-notch infrastructural development projects all over the world. One of the guys that developed Obuagbu, a guy from Delta that developed the, the vaccine for Pfizer COVID-19. Nigerian guy. It's when those types of people come on board that they now start getting conflicted. Like, are these people dumb? Because we can see they are smart at the same time. It's Nigeria. Nigeria is the problem. Nigeria is the common denominator that has made it impossible for us to shine. And when that thief, the rat, uh, Remy Tinubu, when she talks about, you know, she's trying to belittle Nigerians yeah. for doing all types of jobs abroad. Listen, there is no shame in... There's no shame in any... Job. There is dignity in labor. That's right. There is dignity in labor. It wasn't until I came to this country that I had to change my mindset. I had to do all types of dirty jobs before I slowly stabilized. And that is how it is for many other people. You are, that's it. And the Nigerian mentality that Tinubu was talking about, Rebi, was that they wouldn't do these types of jobs in Nigeria. We would have done those jobs in Nigeria if the pay was, if the pay made sense. But obviously, that's not how it is. Nigeria is a country where the people that are professors doing big things in America and all these other countries, if they were in Nigeria, many of them will be hustling to become PAs, personal assistants, to these criminal politicians. Or fighting for it's just the slot of the INEX slot every four, four years, so that they can be electoral returning officer. 
Yes, my brother. Maybe that's what Mr. Obuagbo would have been doing if he if he was if he had stayed back in Nigeria. He wouldn't have helped Pfizer develop any vaccine. I'm not saying that I am an advocate of vaccines, but at least we have people that are shining. Yes. I just thought I put that out there. Nigeria is the problem. Nigeria has to go. Thank you so much, my Eugene General. Bless you, the African Wahala. Right, you never miss too. Thank you so much, and you have a good one yourself. Okay. So that is the African Wahala uh, who just uh, spoke there. I have another call on the line. I hope I got that. Hello there. Hello, good evening, sir. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? How are you? Yeah, I'm here you now. How yeah. are you? I am very well. How are you? It's a pleasure. A pleasure. Thank you for having me again today. So it's the pleasure is mine, Baba. Thanks so much for joining me. Please. Okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes, I was um, listening to the brother I just... Uh, finish up right now now i want to talk about something like you see when we are talking about oh nigeria so there's a lot of people a lot of nigeria we we have come to realize this that uh you know there's no way we can succeed in nigeria that's where a lot of people are living there you know but unfortunately uh you see the same people after they have made their money a place where you 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 couldn't find life right there's no clean water there's no sanitation there's no electricity you know, you you probably lost a relative, even your loved ones, you know, from road accident because of a lack of security, kidnapping, all of that that is going on there. So now you arrive in Europe or in the United States, you have made your money, okay? Instead of investing in your children, you are taking the same money back to that place you left where you couldn't succeed. So it's, it's something I always, I always say, why? I just don't understand that. What, what, what do you think about that? I think it's just uh, the human uh, psychology somehow. And, you know, let's say if we are left brain, or if you are right brain, there are some certain things that you will do, even if, uh, you know, even if you have sworn never to do them, or you just find yourself like unconsciously still kind of aligning and doing them. Because, you know, you know, you know to make sense, true, true, sure you get but see, we run away yeah. from a place you know that I'm just getting away from here. Then you make the money, you made all of that, and you want to take yourself back in there to go and face those no electricity, no security, policemen, this, and you know that stuff. Like, how does that work, Papa? If you ask me now, who I go ask? Uh, you see, that is, I thought, okay, where I have to, maybe you should you know, light on it because I'll be wondering. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I mean, if you make big money, okay? you like, you know, those who make big money, okay, you can say, okay, I can build here, I can build over there in case I want to spend holidays there. But I don't think one who is just working, daily job, how to struggle and struggle and starve the children. Children are not able to go to McDonald's. They are not, they are, they are not going outside for recreational activities. Well, you don't have future for them. And all that. Exactly. You you just starve your children of those things uh, because you want to go and buy some land in a place where there's no road, where there's no electricity. I just cannot get it. Because I was I was discussing with one woman today. Uh, the woman was uh, talking on TikTok saying that, uh, oh, she saw one old woman working on, on working stick. Uh, she's old. Oh, wow. Well, I don't want to end up like this. And uh, she was saying something like that. Is it the way I'm going to end up too? Uh, why this woman couldn't go back to Africa? Then I uh, wrote her, don't you understand that all the time, we Nigerians, we always say, oh, we want to go back, we want to go back. Many of us who build those houses, yeah, they are not go, actually going back there. That is why you see then they get old here. It's not because they haven't built home. For the woman was that, oh, she hasn't built anything. That is why I'm going to That is not the reason. The reason is that when you are getting old, you are dealing with old people in it. You know, you need ambulance all the time. Yes. You need medication. Yes. <laughs> you need attention. Who is going to be there for you when you return back to Nigeria? You know, and they know they tell person. They don't have to tell you. You will know what you are up against when you are actually like exactly. planning to relocate to Nigeria. I'm not talking about you going on holiday like you people would do. I'm talking about you having to live the life you've known, okay? And you are going to have to go and live there uh, and then maybe just visiting this place once in a while. You see, that moment you are making that decision, eh? he will tell yourself that mm. I don't think I'm making the right decision now. Yeah, and we were, we're talking about old age. Sure, you get it. Those in the old yeah, age that we're need regular medical age. supply, you know? 
Exactly. Ablans, I, I live in a place now where most of most of the evening Ablans always come out to take care of the old people here around here. See? Something happened in my poor day, you have heart problem, whatever. There's Ablans always because at the end of the day, when you get old, what are you gonna enjoy that we will make it to say, okay, um, instead of me to invest in my children, let me let me invest in my future. What future at old age? See, let me sorry for cutting you short, right? I had this, uh, oh, no this, course, this conversation with uh, a lot of people too. And in fact, I actually had it with uh, my own loved ones. They wanted me to yeah. have a house in Nigeria. I mean, I'm saying this now because not because uh, it's not a good thing, like you said, but to so many of us who can sit down and think like you just uh, postulated there, bro, right? Uh, that's my position. Yeah. So I'm like, I live in the UK. Okay. I live here so if i am not living in nigeria why should i have a house there and you know what they told me because of you you know when when you are old so you can have a place to come to us like, but i could cash out my pension and buy myself a small flat in lagos or anywhere i choose if i still want to if want to. having a house at that age is this and they were like, no, you cannot do that. You need a normal. I was like, that's the mistake a lot of people are making. Do you know that a lot of people yeah. who no longer go back to Nigeria, who still stay back in America, eh? in their 60s, in their 70s, they've been there for over 40 years, over 50 years, some to. of them, right? They have to. They have but to. They have children yeah, there. They'll tell you that, no, they can't go back anymore. But 40 years ago, their dream was to mm. build a house in Nigeria. 40 years after, ask them now, why are you not going back? No, I yeah. can't leave my yeah. doctor. Yeah. Oh, I can't, I can't stay yeah. in that place. What about your house and everything there? Some people are managing them for me. It will all come back to nothing. A lot of them are watching us. We that. agree, bro. Go on. We stay, we stay, we stay because that money will be used. Let, let me, I see people who buy. I want. I know one Yoruba guy. One of my neighbor. It's like it's like to bury her here with the wife because he said they have one daughter. I say, okay, well, if we're able to finish it, this girl can inherit this one. That if she said this high, you will have something instead of going to build a house in a place where you you start this girl here, she will not have access to a lot of things because you are saving, 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 saving. Whereas you might just pass away you here. Uh, a lot of one, things too in the process. You are denying exactly. yourself a lot of things. Only to now exactly. finish building the property and never live there. One of our guys just passed away, just passed away. They couldn't take him back to the house's beauty in his village. It's the boy better he here. Wow. So all this year of suffering, the children were starving. Every, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. You know, I, it's a pity. I want to talk about, please, briefly before, let me, before I hand up, uh, because uh, we, 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 yeah, we keep, like a brother was talking about, you know, how they not perceive Nigeria now, or the Nigerians now as somehow people who are a little bit retarded. It's not just about corruption. It's even more than that now. They are seeing Nigerians now like, oh, maybe they are somehow so human or whatever. They're looking down on us now because we have seen that the resources God gave you, like they gave the Saudi Arabians, uh, the Iranians, the other countries that have resources. Libya was the best country in Africa. The project Momo Gaddafi has done with that money, turning water all the way from kilos, kilometers from the, across the desert to his people. Awesome. It's what China is doing. Exactly. It's, it's, what, it's what China is doing today now. What I'm trying to say is that as human beings, when God gave you the... We couldn't go to moon. We couldn't invest machinery, cars, uh, aeroplane, you know, but God was able to say, okay, I know you don't have or whatever. We don't know why, but it is what it is. Okay, but we, we depos I deposited all this thing for you in case you cannot sell it and you to acquire those things you could invent it. But you see a black man, you see, you see just moving here and there like in the cycle, dancing and wearing Agbada and I just, I, I, when I look at this, I, 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 I want to cry. I want to cry. I want to cry. And yes, we say, oh. It's the opportunity. You know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, you know, backwater country was, uh, UAE was a backwater country as far, I mean, as recent as 1990, right? Yeah. 1990, yeah. right? They say at this Keno where, yeah, you know, the uh, Emirates, right? They will jump on a, a wooden Keno, okay? So yes. go onto their short, I mean, some of their rivers of fishing and all of that stuff, right? Today, yes. those villages that you saw, all those uh, old, old wooden Keno in uh, 1990, you will now see all this uh, high-rise building and all this choice destination in all over the place. The increase of those things. Just yes, simply from yes, crude oil. Yes. Crude oil. Yes. Not yes. That we have too. Just crude oil. Mm. 
Mm. And from 1990 to 2000, I mean, from 1990 to now, eh, that place is now banning Nigeria from, they don't want to give Nigerians their visas. Don't come to our country. Like, see that space. Yeah, exactly. 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 That's why I, I, called, I, I said it before your show. I said that when a nation is seen as a failed nation or as a failed uh, country, the people in that country are, are seen as fair people, irrespective of religion and creed. It, it doesn't matter because your, your country is what they see that gives you that respect. When your country succeeds, it have to mean that you are smart. That's why you're able to build smart country. So, but when your country is seen as a country that's failed, nothing's working there. Anywhere you go, you are carrying that. They will be seeing you as safe people. It doesn't matter who you are. From Nigeria. Oh, all right. Nice one. Nice meeting you. It's simply like, oh, you're from that country, right? Oh, no. It's such a shame, uh, Baba. It is a shame. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. It's anyway, crazy. Thank you so much, okay? Uh, yeah. For this. All right. It's a you pleasure, a, sir. You it's a, a pleasure, good, sir. Uh, yeah, you have a good evening, okay? Nice one, Baba. You too, sir. Thank yes, you, sir. So, um, here, Nigeria that has army. Don't try Nigerian army. They can crush any insecurity anytime they want to crush it. Says, uh, a voluntary slave. Now, uh, Dele Alakori, who is your minister for mineral resources. Who went to uh, Kuwait? Was that Kuwait? I think it was Kuwait. No, was it Kuwait? No, Qatar. It was Qatar. So they went to Qatar and told them that they have natural resources in Nigeria that is you know, that are really available for everybody's grab. So Dele Alakori was expected to be the Tifnumbu's propaganda machine, like Layamo. But Tifnumbu had other plan. Now they made Dele Alakori the resources minister, mineral resources minister. And since then, the Liakala Korea has opened shop. In fact, they have put together an army for him. I don't know if you have seen them. This one will be civil defense. So this one will be army or NIE or anything or police. So now special forest ranger where the uh, Liakala Korea is putting together to help protect. You know what they said? They said they were to protect Natural resources sites in Nigeria. These are the people that will be providing security protection to those who are coming to take your mineral resources. You will be seeing them. You know, go know who sent them. You know, go know how they got there. But they don't pay people like Allah Kori here. And they have recruited an army, not the Nigerian police or Nigerian army, their own private army. They call them Forest Army. Or Dele Alakori, in case if you don't know, I just thought I should tell you, but I have a caller too. Hello there. Hello, Chief Mayebun. Sir, how are Baba, you, sir? I'm good. Can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go to the Temple of Truth. Ashe, Baba. Thank you so much. Okay, okay. Okay, let me go to the Temple of Truth. Ashe, Ashe. Obeni Beshu, Emma Bello Jujumoni, Ashe, 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 Ewani, Emma Wani Booba, Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Baba, do you notice uh, Chief Tunumbu always remind us that light after the tunnel? I know. Nobody uses it anymore. But it's, it's, it's crazy, sir. Go on, sir. And he said, all these are our governors, all our governors. Hmm. They pretend like we can't grow our food in the south. Hmm. So we have to wait for the north because they leave the, uh, what is it called, Fulani, mm -hmm. to come and read. Like people are crying every day. We want to go to farm. A lot of diaspora buy land, mm -hmm. invest, know that this is what our people need. We can make more money. Yes. You people couldn't protect us. They are killing people invest a lot of money. Then you, you, you guys are collecting uh, security allocation or whatever. Security, security uh, boots. Every month. Yes, sir. Do you know how much is the security vote that all the 36 state governors in Nigeria take a year, sir? 
No. You don't. I'll tell you. 326 billion naira. That's how much they take a year. 36 of them. Okay. Sir, do you know how much the entire state in Nigeria combined? 36 states in Nigeria budgeted for education in 2023, sir. In case if you don't, I'll tell you. 141 billion naira for education for the entire each state. If you add all of them together and say how much is it planning to spend on education? How much did the right. data spend? How much did the bias as I put everything together? 141.2 or so billion. But for security votes, sir, mm. 320 something billion naira. That's how much those guys collected and pocketed. Okay. Yet okay. peace, no day, security, no deal. Continue, sir. All right. The past governor and the president, mm -hmm. yeah, yes, by the time the clock tick every second, yeah, we are going to fish them out. Even though they passed away, we are going to dig their grave out. Every single person die in Yoruba land. You see all those past governor, minister, we are going to dig them out. If it are still alive, this is going to be 1,000 feet. We are going to pull them. Even though when they are home. God. Bottomless, bottomless. Uh, yeah, they are not going to see the sun. Hmm. Even though they die, we won't know. Hmm. We will not recognize them. If we if, have their names on any monument, we will remove them. We will remove if them. If we have any land issued to them and their family, we will revoke them. We will revoke if them. If they have any part of uh, the land that they have assigned to those they call their friends or family, we will revoke them too. Yeah. They are living Including on borrowed the judges, time. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are judges. They are whatever they associate with. Yes. We are going to bring them because. All those others as well. Mm. We are watching them closely. Yes. Very, very, very closely. Yes. They won't go free. You see this religion, you know, I'm always said, mm. stone them to death. These religious leaders and the imam pastors, can you imagine? Someone is going to tell me after Ramadan, I'm infidel. Yeah. So, so because of what Ramadan now, be what happened to the kafirins, the kafirunos, yeah. the believers? It's like we are their mercy, sir. So if they choose yeah. to spare us, that means they are merciful to us. If they, they choose to kill to us, that means, well, there is, the no, there is no Aram in it. And they want yeah, us to no exist Aram. in the same country, sir. Wala ma wao, wala ma wao. Baba, Sheikh Gumi, like you said, yeah. Sheikh Gumi is going to lead the prayer. Sheikh Gumi, because they always say they are Muslims. Mm. So he's going to lead the prayer. People is going to stand behind him. He said, this is our leader. This is our sheikh. Uh -huh. The person is collecting ransom. They are taking people off speech. And you are Yoruba, it is Yaweri. Oh. It is Yaweri. Yala Yayi. Atoro modo moyi te ma gbe be shit sori ka kiri yen. Eh? Awon family yin lo wa ni no tin yen. E lo ti to tin se Nigeria ke fi le Yoruba le fun wa. Please. Go to north, go to Sokoto, go to if you talk in Nigeria, if you want to follow Muhammad, go to north. Leave our own land for us. They can steal all the money. But there's no around on that. Whether the G or Mokongbe, G thousand of children, you keep no. moving. No. There's no around on that. You are seeing Sheikh Gumi, your brother, from North, prouding. Like, yeah, I can be the middleman. Mm -hmm. Is that, it's not around. In the open, they are negotiating in the open. Families yeah. are selling their property, sending the Party. money over to them. But none of you are far. None of you are far, Imam, Sheikh from Yoruba land. Speak because it's your Muslim brother. Baba, hmm. 
Gbogbo yin le ma bounce wo nu na o. It's a matter of fire. Baba. It's matter. Thank, yeah. Thank you so much eh. All right baba, good night. Yes, My sir. You have a, you have a good evening, okay? Eh? Nice All right one. sir. So uh as you are here up, eh, on a better act on top of before you become a victim of your own silence, okay? People who claim uh that others are infidel because they won't sort of uh, follow what they follow or how they follow it. If you are a Muslim in southern Nigeria, you see these jihadists, they do not even see you as a uh, one uh Muslim brother or sister. Uh, every time the chance presents itself, I'm serious. So here is another caller. Hello there. My good Baba. Sir, how are you? It's Austin. I'm also Austin from Germany. No, another Austin. I had my first Austin from yeah. uh, the UK. Austin, how are you this evening? Yeah. My idea, we are pushing it. Very, very, sure. very, very happy to hear from you. Uh -huh. Keep pushing. I, keep I, tried, pushing. I, I tried more than 20 times to get you this night. Well, finally, you got me, Baba. I mean, somebody told me they wow. tried for uh, 400 times. I was like, really? I said, yeah, just come to me and tell by something. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I can imagine. Definitely. Sometimes you will, be, you will, I will be driving and dialing and dialing and dialing, but I, ah, it's okay. Until it get anyway, you. I... Good to have you. I really appreciate you. I really appreciate your effort. You have awesome. been, you have been like a blessing to all of us, honestly. Thank you, man. Um, we learn every day from you. Most of us that doesn't have time to listen to news. Though I don't listen to Nigerian news anymore, but I, if I want to get anything, I come to you. You just wait about That's how I get my own. Because you always, it always definitely like, I just, told the same, but with different I wait in so. my... Eh? Austin, my I said, today, I said I the whole story my, always sounds the same, today. but with different victims every day. Definitely. 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 That's how Nigeria is. Anyway, um, I just want to go straight to the point. Yes. Because uh, when we talk about Nigeria, I said last time that Nigeria is not surprising me. When we, just, um, when we see what is going on in Nigeria, first of all, Sheikh Gumi, um, they are changing in the name for terrorists. I know. I haven't known the camera speak exactly and speak like what Gumi is um, saying, has no. been saying for all these years. No. Namde have never said half, half, half of what Gumi is saying. All never. Gumi, Gumi will come out and say that, that he knows where the bandit, the bandit, the criminal, the terrorist, where they are. He said, come and negotiate with them. Come, let me lead. That means Gumi, Gumi knows terrorists and Nigerian government, no Python have danced in his place. Nobody knows him, nobody have ever got to him. So, but when it comes to any person like an Igbo man or Namdekano, Nigerian government will be flexing their muscles. That is number one. Number two, number two. I, I, I can tell you that the military that was um, murdered in Delta State, that they, they, they claimed they killed in Delta State, was an RNG. I will tell you, I'm, I'm telling you, I can tell you that. The Nigerian military. Austin is almost looking so now. Remember, they said yeah. they went there for peace meeting when that didn't fly. Yeah. They said they went there to rescue, yeah. kidnap victims. That didn't fly as yeah. well. Then now yeah. we are yeah. now being told that he's there to stop bunkery so that Nigeria can make more money from crude oil. Now that is also exactly. not making sense. But here, yeah, exactly. Austin, if, if, if they said that, if they said that he went there to stop um, bunkery. And uh, first of all, Nigerian government, so we're here. Again, Nigerian government gave um, their security to guide the pipeline to Tumpolo. Mm -hmm. And the, Tumpolo is the one that is in charge of the, um, the illegal bunker. Thank you. Illegal bunker. And now another man volunteered to go and stop the bunker. <laughs> Don't you think that he stepped on the toes of other military guys? Hmm. Don't you think that those guys are the ones that killed him? How do you tell me that a village, um, listen to what the other man said, that the village, they are not even up to 1,000 years. Hmm. How do you tell me that the youth can have their mind and have sophisticated weapons to overpower the military system and kill system of them? Hierarchy, How? like a hierarchy of military. Hierarchy. Supposed to hierarchy. Commando. hierarchy. As those guys move, with very God, with that, man said, that man said, as those guys yeah. move to yeah. that area, 
una go una go yeah. see protection team following them because those yeah. guys are not just yeah. any guy we're supposed to be anywhere anyhow who killed them exactly. they're not telling exactly. us yet exactly hmm. exactly so now that is number that is number two nigeria is a country where everything can go on you can forget about it Tinubu will not do anything. He can only honor them. The reason why he will honor them, Tinubu is afraid that the military will take over. Mm -hmm. That is why he will dance to the tune of military at all costs. Every time, any day, Tinubu will never... He will, even when the military will say, um, mm -hmm. buy us this, he will buy. He will. He will buy. If they tell him to jump, eh, he no go question. They go just ask him will, how high. He, he will he never push up. Jump. He will do it. I know. Exactly. He will do it. So that, that is um, Tinubu for you. Then, his wife that came out to talk about Nigeria. Uh, let me be honest with you. Mm. This is really the mindset of many Nigerians. Mm. The woman who was speaking out. Not just the, the elite. The mindset of many. many not, not, just the, not just the elite. Mm. Many Nigerians. Majority. Majority of Nigerians. You know, I was at home. I was in Nigeria last month. I went with my wife, with my uh, family. Oh, bless so, you. I, yeah, I know what I saw. I, what I saw in Nigeria. Nigerians believe, they always tease you. Look at you. You are the washing plate in abroad. Mm. I can't even do that kind of job. But they will come and be begging someone that is washing plate uh, abroad uh, money. So this is their mindset. Their mindset has been ne, just to a small girl with a big god. That's the mindset of the majority of Nigerians. Mm. Majority of Nigerians. They don't believe in hard work. They don't believe in dignity in labor. They don't believe. Like it. I mean, they, like, like they want you to feel bad that you work. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, whether exactly. you are working as a carer or you are working as a cleaner yeah, no. or you are working as a chef, yeah. whatever you are doing, like they actually boldly come around. Like you said, though, people that will still beg yeah. you for money. Yeah. They come out and say, yeah. "It's yeah. not that body you they wash for abroad. It's not that exactly. you know, the exactly. national they go wash there." Yeah, not the national they go wash. What kind, and what kind of uh, Audacity is that I never really see that way, right? Like they wanted to feel yeah, bad that you have yeah. a job. You need to feel bad that your job is uh you know, they have none. They have nothing. I, you know, before before I, I used I was driving uh, hmm. but, no before before my before my car was right around four, 2013 more than before. Right. So one of my guys came to tell me, um, um, bros, you are bigger than this. If I, I can drive this. Honestly, I told him, your great grandfather, did he have spoke, bicycle spoke, talk less of you. The person that is telling me this, they don't have spoke, bicycle spoke. They don't have the bicycle. Say, okay, I, I don't buy spoke, I'll go buy rib later, then buy two. And I, mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, their, their third generation doesn't have it, have never think, thought of it. And, and he's telling me, he can let. Yeah, he has advising me that he can't drive Ralph for 2013 model. You no, know, it's not even advising you. It's pretty much putting himself in your place and say if he was you, he can't. Yeah, yeah. God damn it, man. This, this, is, this is Nigeria. So the woman was speaking, she was just talking with the perspective of Nigerians. And he, he, she got many Nigerians. Many Nigerians think, ah, if I go to abroad now, what am I going to do? To go and kill your ass? To go and do this? To go and do this? I can never do that. Whereby, he is lavishing in poverty where he is in Nigeria. Hmm. That's the mindset. You know, they have used poverty to weaponize Nigerian mindset. Everybody is not. I will be honest with you. Majority of Nigeria, 75 to 80% of Nigeria are not normal. Mm -hmm. They are not normal. No matter however we want to think. Of, Nigeria is surviving because of the grace of the ones that are fighting. I'm honestly. telling you honestly. Do you have much money they made for not, That's why I say we say many people know something not to them. They seem to have enough Jesus, money. Like, Jesus. You know? Yeah. If not the ones outside, if not the ones outside, Nigeria is finished. I'm telling yeah, you honestly. Would have been Nigeria, worse than Venezuela by now. Now we they build them, and, but they don't know. And anywhere you talk to Nigeria, it's only the ones abroad is subsidizing Nigeria. We are really subsidizing. We are doing really doing a lot. We are really doing a lot. I'm telling you honestly. So I would say, for Nigeria to change, someone was saying this night: if Nigeria divided um, into pieces, there will be no peace. I disagree with him. Quite, quite, quite all right. Right. Because Society. the foundation of the foundation of Nigeria, yeah, the foundation of Nigeria is faulty. There is no way you can. Nigeria is irredeemable. You can never redeem Nigeria. It is impossible. No. Nothing you can do. Remove, remove Tinubu 
put Obi two times Obi will never redeem Nigeria. Two times. You will see. He can never redeem Nigeria. He can't. He can't. And when if he, he can, make an this. effort to genuinely, anybody will make effort to genuinely say they want to fix they will Nigeria, they will kill him. that person they will, will be they will kill him. They will kill him. Person, before they kill him, anybody that wants yeah. to genuinely fix Nigeria, that person is probably yeah. plotting to break up Nigeria because that's the only solution. And once they sense that yeah. your move, this move, this is what they yeah. do so. You won't fix this thing. Yep. Fixing it means that everybody yeah. will finally find the boldness and what it takes to break away. They will kill you first yeah, before definitely. you break Nigeria. And that's uh, it. That's why a lot of them yeah, yeah. touch it. Sorry. Or even say it. Sorry, say. There, was, there, was one room, there was one room I was here. I don't know if it is true that, that the Mephile remit 4 trillion naira back to the government. It's a so, lie. Do not now, believe that. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe it. I, I was just saying, let's, remember, let's remember, say that yes, true. it's true. Uh, 90 billion dollars. Yeah. Daptis, I mean, educated Daptis actually believe that that she stole ninety billion dollars and she's returned ninety that billion. Dollars. How did she carry it? That time? How, how, did, how did she carry it? <laughs> Man, how did she carry it? And you see, people, where they talk, say, I like, say, we know even we may not even know this whole thing. The majority of the world are looking at us as people who are like subhuman, like people who don't really get sense. Like, they're always loud. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, we are there, like bragging, like uh, we are this, we are that. When they look at us, they're like. So we even, like, you know, no, the world knows Nigeria. They, 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 they world knows, the world knows Nigeria. Like oh, African Wahala said, I always, I always like African Wahala. He always make very impactful points. Or every time he says it, he come up, he come up one. He, he was just saying that, that anywhere we go. Thank you. Anywhere we go. I am going to let you go they, they now, look okay? Uh, I can tell that uh, okay. you are multitasking behind there, all right? So thank you so much as okay, usual, okay. okay? I look forward to talking to you again. Okay, bye-bye. Take it easy. Now, I am stuck in between, should I take my last call? We're already over three hours. So I'm like, should I or should I not? Should I, should I not? Can we spare... No, what will happen is that uh, we would have to call it uh, a night, okay? Let me save the energy. And you said save your time. So when we meet tomorrow in the afternoon, tomorrow is Friday, so we'll call it TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. And you can indeed phone in and share what you want to share tonight or what you could really share tonight, okay? And you can also look forward to this uh, uh, the premiere of uh, this broadcast later uh, in the morning. Thank you so much to every one of you, as usual. We've had a wonderful night, okay? A wonderful evening, rather. And it's great. And to some of you, it is a great afternoon. Indeed, it's actually a great night to some, because I bet it's uh, my friends in India, Australia, and all that. You won't believe it. They are already in tomorrow. They are already on Friday. And not just being on Friday, they are just early in the morning, Friday morning. But to the rest of us, we are just a few hours away. Eh? Okay, Nigeria is already on Friday as well. I will see you some other time. So thank you, all of you. And you all have a wonderful night. Good night.
Maye kuti ite Popo oje duwe surat Sungani mati shayi to yaki wanshe Omo padero ni fi wani ron